will stand. Uh, <laughs> is so were popsicle stands a thing? I don't know. <laughs> like that's that idiom has been heard forever. But... Uh, I I just like the um just like saying popsicles like it's a greek word popsicles or whatever popsicles <laughs> popsicle yeah popsicles it's uh very silly it is want to do 40 sure sure yeah Oh, that was like perfect on my end. Exactly five seconds. Wonderful. Mine's too zoomed in to know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have five seconds of resolution. <laughs> uh, oh, no, I've I do. Got... I have six seconds. I've got like 20. Could zoom it out, but eh. Uh, okay, okay, okay. What do we got here? What do we got here? We get to tell Alex what to play next. That's mm. fun. Gears pop, idea. maybe. Have some ideas, yeah. Yeah, so that, that is a completely relevant game right now. For the next few weeks. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay. Uh, I like how you said you were gonna just check in with Umineko when you got like when you wrapped it up, and then we've talked about it every week since. Well, it's because I thought maybe I would do other games in the meantime, like alongside uh -huh. but then i didn't uh -huh. so mm. i yeah. see i see <laughs> mm -hmm. okay uh i could talk about the games i refunded on steam this week <laughs> oh man there are Plural? two of them there are two of them yeah two games they're them. not bad games they were just like i was like oh this is like this seems neat not for me like dirt five no I, art of rally and oh. caves of cud or could oh, could yeah, the cud whatever but, yeah yeah that's a that's a, that's a jesus christ that game <laughs> <sighs> jesus christ that game cold, need a cold shower after that i'm sad uh, that no one likes my jesus christ superstar references but that's okay i i <laughs> I watched Jesus Christ Superstar once, like the, it was like an old recording, like old movie version from, <clears throat> I don't even know. Anyway, uh, what, what's it going to be? I'm trying to think of what my intro is going to be. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I know. Uh, all right. Well, you'll, you seem just as shocked as we will be. Hello and welcome to episode 146 of the gaming fix podcast on november 7th 2020 just squeaking in on november 7th on my end because the clock's turned now it's like it's 11 35 p.m here in japan i'm your host andre cole aka your partner's favorite popsicle i'm joined today by allison my mom, like, if every so often, my mom is like, do they still make the popsicles with two sticks? And so I think about that all the time. <laughs> because my mom is like, 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 that's one of those, like, I don't know if you know that that's a thing. And I'm like, yeah, I know that's a thing that you, people used to do. Uh, <laughs> and I don't know if they still make those, but, you know. Yeah. You know, it seems like it, you just stop at the store and just... Uh, curiosity gets the best of you. You walk down that frozen food aisle, you walk out just a, an abundance of popsicles. I don't know if that's ever happened to me, but okay. Uh, speaking of an abundance of popsicles, joining us all the way from Canada, Alex. Wow. Um, the one I always used to go for as a kid, if we had Dickie D's, that was like the little, the people who would like pedal by on a bike that's full of uh popsicles and stuff like that okay uh -huh. okay that is like that is not a thing here okay i mean i mean like that not where i live but like there are like i am familiar with the idea of the ice cream bike yeah oh i yeah. am not i've yeah. never heard of that yeah so we had that and 
Uh, I always get the rocket, whatever it's called. Oh, those uh, are good. Like the one that's like red, white, and blue, I think, actually. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, no, yeah, I didn't yeah. think about the colors before, but yeah. But it's those three colors, and it's like the three different flavors. No, those are pretty yeah. great. Those are good. I. Um, you don't get the misshapen Spider-Man. Those are pretty good, too. Or the Sonic. Oh, God. Yeah. Or Teenage Mutant Ninja I'm... Turtle. That's what we had. Yeah. 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 I, I'm now a fan of the ones that are kind of more like actual frozen juice kind of ones that are... Uh, not just kind of popsicles like uh, those are those are good right now so i i have a couple of those in my freezer actually but the real fruit ones those are good yeah yeah okay i looked it up it's called a firecracker not a rocket okay yeah Yeah. well pretty good yeah i like those i like those real fruit ones uh but i why am i blanking on it there's i feel like there's popsicles that are like famous here creamsicles no, I mean, Fudge like, sickle. specifically Minnesota, but... Oh. Fudgesicle's pretty good. Ice pop. Those are pretty good, but I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a huge those fan of like uh, chocolate Kool-Aid. ice cream. Okay, okay, so you know those tubes of frozen fruit stuff? They're multicolored. You got red, yeah, blue, yeah. Yellow, Oh, yeah, whatever. the push pops. What, 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 okay, that's what you call them? Yeah. yeah. Okay, because I've heard other Americans call them otter pops. No, no, that's that's the, uh, that's the those like, are the uh, the plastic bag. That's the frozen yeah, Kool Aid. That's, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, I thought you meant yeah, the yeah. cylinder. Oh, and you no, no, no. The... There were a couple of summers, <laughs> like as a kid, where like my mom would get like a giant box of those, like the biggest box of of like those frozen ones, and uh, so I just like eat them all summer. Yeah. Oh, that's oh my god, it? this is reminding me. Uh, so we, <laughs> I was at my friend's house, like in high school. Uh, oh or at his uh his lake house and Ooh. it was like they had the, it was their summer home and they hadn't been there for like the whole winter or whatever and like the fall spring and so we're coming back it's their first time back and so i'm helping clean up because it's you know uh, oh we're gonna spend some time out here i'll help clean up and then i get to like go out on the lake and have fun in the boat and whatnot and we just start finding otter pop wrappers everywhere upstairs everywhere Hidden That's under couch great. cushions, in drawers, under the carpet, under the couch, just <laughs> absolutely everywhere. And you know, it was my my friend's little brother who was who was like a year or two younger than us. <laughs> it's just so he was like middle school when he did this, and just wow. Otter Pops everywhere. I thought it was going to be was... a hit a hit in my Otter Pop by mom type situation. <laughs> It was very silly. So we found like twenty Otter Pop wrappers up there. Yeah. yeah. By the way, in Canada, we call those freezies. Okay. I don't think uh, I ever called them Otter Pops when I was a kid. Yeah. So that uh, might be what we called them. Like freeze pop also uh, is like another more Midwest, I think. But I don't, I don't know for sure. We need yeah. Pat here, but Pat is resting before he takes up, uh, before he gets behind the yoke of a plane for extra life and uh-huh. flies all around the world for the kids yep he will have yeah. his hands on throttle and stick he'll be hotossing it up and on and on his hotoss yep <laughs> but uh <laughs> oh. but yeah check that out it, it'll be really good and hey we're doing it for uh well pat's doing it for the uh uh for extra life so that's always a good thing to yeah. sport and if and if you happen to be watching this live, Super GG Radio is also currently, I think, like a little over halfway through their their go for extra life. I think they just made it to twenty five hundred dollars. So they're going. Aren't they going to midnight? Uh, uh, or I don't even know. Like they're, they're, they're streaming. I, I thought they're streaming midnight to midnight. I thought that. Um, I thought it was midnight central. Yeah. So they're like around. Halfway. Well, yeah. Mid- okay. Are they? I don't even know what's going on. Yeah. I, I don't know when they started. It could be. I... <laughs> <laughs> what is time this week? Honestly, you know? time is weird, right? Like, I mean, yeah, yeah the, this year, but like this week has been um, the... cha- hectic, chaotic. Thursday night oh, was yeah. the most like surreal night of my life where huh. you have like where there's, there's there's obviously all the election stuff and then there's all the rumors about Putin and then there's all the supernatural <laughs> nonsense and I'm just like what is going on Yeah that was all one night here. Yeah. 
Destiel is canon. Uh, but he, Castiel immediately goes to hell because of it. So that's that's something. Hey, it was, Anyways. It was, it was another reason to bring the Omega verse back into the world. Oh, so God. Back up in normal conversation. I've only seen like one or two episodes of that show, but it's just like, I, I, I feel like I know too much about it because of uh, just cultural osmosis. It's it's not my favorite, but but anyways, that was like wild though. That was that was wild. All right. Anyhow. Well, video games. Finally, we've made it to the part. We've we've made it through the part everyone likes about the podcast, where we talk about popsicles and whatever. And now <laughs> we're going to subject people to our terrible video game opinions. Yeah, what what, what the podcast is really about? Yep. Uh. Allison, what's your terrible opinion this week? Uh, uh, so I, so since this week has been weird, uh, to say the least, I'd say, uh, and rough, I decided to get myself a, a new game, uh, so that I could kind of like, you know, have some level of escapism, have some level of kind of chilling out. And so I started playing, uh, the Atelier series. So I started playing Atelier Riza on switch and guys i think this is i'm getting into it it's really good. Oh, i think man. it's it's really really addicting um so, so if you mm -hmm. i was just gonna ask where in the atelier series is this because i know like there's like a billion games yeah this is the most recent one um so the thing about the atelier series is that's uh, nice, and I, I'm 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 actually rec trying to recommend Sam to get into this with me. Uh, but the thing that's a little bit kind of nice, at least for me, is that while the uh, Trail series seems to be all completely connected, these games aren't. Um, there are certain sub series that are connected, but kind of loosely. Um, right. But this is the most recent one, and it's the start of a new subseries. And uh, it's apparently kind of a, like, they're kind of hoping it's a new start for the series. Although it seems like it's pretty much the same kind of game as the others. So I don't know what that necessarily entails. But um, yeah, this is the latest one. I, they're going to be making... Uh, uh, Ryza 2 coming up soon so I'll probably have to play that because this game is good although I'll have to say the one thing that is that I have an issue with is that these games are expensive <laughs> because the season pass is $55 and I'm like why are on you a, doing this to me on, well, on okay, a $60 what is, game yeah what what is in the season pass because season passes for these jrpgs can be a lot of costumes yeah and, and that's actually the good thing though as i was looking at that but every every piece of dlc is separate so it's like you can get like it is it does save you money if you buy it as a season pass but if but i'm thinking i'm probably going to ignore all the season uh, all the costume content and just get the um a couple of the story dlcs and that should be a lot cheaper but yeah, but it has a lot of those like, hey, here's costumes or hey, here's like weapon skins for like mm -hmm. a few dollars each. So those kind of add up. But yeah, so if if you're if you don't know about the uh, Atelier series, basically the big draw of all of these is the um, is that you're an alchemist, and the other big draw is that they're very kind of relatively chill. Um, so I think some of the games in the Dusk subseries get a little bit more like, hey, we have to save the world. But so far, I'm like 10 hours into uh, Ryza. And so far, the, the, the stakes are like, hmm, there might be a, a monster on the mainland way away from our, our village. That's something we might have to think about. Uh, and then also, but like, a big part of it was just like, we're going to build a clubhouse. So it's like very chill. Um, and you're, but also it has that alchemy system, which is actually really, really fun. Um, it, I've been really enjoying kind of playing around with it. Uh, so what are you doing with the alchemy system? Like making potions or uh, you make literally anything you want to. Um, so basically it's, it's like basically a souped up crafting system. I think, 
from what I've heard, the it, it's one of the, like the first crafting systems in, in games. Like uh, like I mean, not Ryza, but the original Atelier series. Um, so basically, the kind of loop that that you go through is that you go out into the overworld and you collect materials, um, either from defeating enemies or from just kind of picking them up. Uh, there are different uh, materials, uh, different areas around the world. Um, and then you go back to your uh, uh, atelier um, and you uh, have some recipes and you throw in these ingredients and you make items. Like you can make literally anything. Like I, uh, you can build like weapons or armor or more potions or stuff that you can sell, stuff that you can uh, give to other people. Um, and one of the things that's kind of interesting is that it, the game really encourages you to build them up, um, make uh, things like bombs and uh, medicine that you can use in, uh, in battle. So it really wants you to be like using your items, which is unusual for me because I am definitely one of those people that plays uh, RPGs and hoards every item oh, yeah, and then realizes totally. that I get to the end of the game and you're like, huh, so I have all of those still. But this <laughs> game is pretty early on is like, no, you need to use them. Um, but there's a couple of hand wavy reasons that you can reuse certain items um, or basically get the, the effects of the item without actually using it up. But yeah, so it, it, it's like, it's it, it's a really interesting system too um, because there are a couple of books that teach you recipes, but most of the recipes you get are from modifying existing recipes. So you're kind of constantly going like, okay, I want to make this item. So I need to get these ingredients and then modify this existing recipe so that once I modify that recipe, I can more easily make this other thing. So you're kind of constantly kind of playing around with it. Um, and then there's also differently the, the different quality of the ingredients that you put in can improve the quality of the items. There's different traits. It, it, it gets really, really um, complex. Like there's a lot of stuff that I'm like, I'm not going to even think about knowing how to do all of this stuff until kind of later on, because I'm still, making all the items and still and mm. mostly trying to make them stronger so it's there's there's a lot of systems with the alchemy but it's it's all pretty i, I think pretty addicting like there'll be times where they're like hey uh go do this story thing and i'm like yeah but i'm going to stand around in, in my atelier for a couple of in-game days and just make stuff for a while <laughs> and uh and keep doing that so that's that's been fun is um, there any sort of like equivalent exchange rule or like can can you like try and bring back your dead mom uh with some alchemy and then with i don't brother. know like get yeah with your brother and like or or your sister you know who knows and you like i don't know you have to like give up something and then your brother gets stuck in like a suit of armor because his body is like destroyed and you just attach his soul to like the first thing you can find i don't know anything like that uh, how did you know that that was the plot of the game now um <laughs> are there any yeah. like dogs and like little girls God, that are just no. like best friends and no i hate, no. I hate this any, any doting fathers who always carry on pictures of their adorable child child you cannot pet the dog in atelier riza whatever one this is <laughs> that's the one but <laughs> whatever oh. the subtitle isn't there a subtitle on it or? yeah oh there um, is i didn't know that because it's like atelier yeah. riza is like the series isn't it and then there's like a subtitle yeah so, so, uh, uh, atelier so, riza ever darkness and the secret hideout ah uh, i see yeah. so mm -hmm. i i was curious and i looked at wikipedia to see how many atelier games there are um there's 22 in well, the main uh, series and okay. but if you include uh side games and remakes what do you think it is 44 total there's, there's exactly as many side games as there are main entries allison uh 38 nope 69 what oh <laughs> yes. nice nice yeah. <laughs> nice yeah. it's really nice 
I was gonna say that's like some Kingdom Hearts level bullshit, but then I remembered they're all main entries in Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, no, this is like including ports and remakes and stuff like that. Yeah, and so, I think that's oh, one of the well, that's so and that's one of the things that's um, <laughs> ni- nice about this series is that like the subs like they have the sub series, but apparently like if you want to just jump into a game in the sub series, it's really not that horrible if you do like it's it's not going to be the end of the world if you jump into like the middle game of one of the sub series you just might not necessarily get as much out of it or you might not um get some references but otherwise they're mostly pretty separate so like picking up picking up riza on on switch it's just like, yeah, this is technically the 21st game, um, mainline series game, but it is its own complete thing. So you don't have to worry about, you know, oh, do I, do I have to go through several? You don't have to worry about like 30 years of history of games. Right. Like some series that some members of our podcast <laughs> are playing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's there's a lot of uh, a lot of to do about like which series should you start with, but I mean it really just kind of depends on what games that you can they you want to put, put into. They put out yeah. like a collection of like a remastered thing recently. Of, yeah, like, they, three they, of them. Yeah, they they put out a remastered version of the uh, Arlen series, which is um, was originally on PS3, but is now on PlayStation 4. And then the uh, Dusk series that's um, was also on PS3. The one thing I'll say though, these uh, are expensive. Also, yeah. uh, the like the entire collection for both of those typically goes for ninety dollars. Um, that, that's some real Japanese ass pricing. Yeah, I mean, you can buy them individually for forty dollars each, um, and then what a bundle! <laughs> right, so you're losing kind of... money. Best value. So yeah, it's 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 rough. I mean, they are JRPGs, so they tend to be longer, I think. But yeah, that I, I've I've had. I've been kind of vaguely interested in getting into the series for quite a while, uh, and I've had them on my. Uh, switch wish list for like ever since they've come out and they do not go on sale very frequently so yeah. i will i'm kind of keeping an eye out going hmm for hopefully i can pick them up but worst case scenario i'm i'm i might just go and get them because i'm hmm. i'm i'm these these games are just like really chill but also the 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 loop of collecting items, doing alchemy, fighting battles with your stuff that you've made in alchemy is is fun. What do you think the likelihood is that you're gonna fight God by the end? I think extremely low. Like you're going honestly, to craft God. Mm. <laughs> you're I going think to make God low. through alchemy. Like, that's the thing is that these like when I what? say they're chill, like they're very like lighthearted God, and fun. What, what does God need series. with an alchemy bench? Yeah, so I, I, just, I think that's uh, I think that's uh, unlikely, but I'll let you know if I fight God, uh, okay, because you. I've I've certainly done that a couple of times uh, this year with our JRPGs. Um, oh. So oh okay, is there yeah. no could... just no it's just my my real life? Uh, sure. Uh, could God attempt an alchemical transaction so unequal? Even he couldn't exchange it. No? <laughs> Just That's that there. nothing. So inequivalent that even God himself cannot exchange it. Uh, okay. Well, that's Atelier Riza, the, the Ever Darkness and the Secret the something, Secret Flower. But uh, I don't in know. the Secret Hideout. Secret hideout. There we go. You build the hideout with alchemy because that's a thing you can do. Is it a treehouse? Mm-hmm. No, but I, I saw Full Metal Alchemist. Edward Elric could make a hideout mm. if he had enough metal. It's pretty metal. 
rest in peace eddie van halen we already did that one that was that was like two weeks ago god two weeks oh, man what is time anyways we also asked that at the beginning of the podcast i think so oh, we, we certainly did <laughs> It's it, it, it still true. Whoa. May was May was six months ago. <laughs> Andre's eyes are huge now. <laughs> uh, I, I've been working in school since May, so it's actually not that weird. But uh, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, how about you tell us, Alex, about the Sea hey. Cats? C-Cats. Everyone's favorite football team, the Sea Cats. Is that a thing I should know? <laughs> uh, Umineko. Oh, duh. Umineko sorry. Uh, yeah. I, so the reason I question that is because Victoria has a sports team that's something similar to that, but I can't remember what it's called. The Harbor Cats. Seagulls? Harbor Cats. Wow. The Harbor Cats. Okay. So that's just like... like cats that hang around the harbor. Like... So I think the Harbor Cats are actually otters. So that I don't follow. <laughs> Cuz they're kind of like cats and they hang out around around the, the water and stuff cuz we have otters around here. So anyways, that's why okay. I wasn't following immediately cuz I was like, "Wait, what did you look something up about Victoria? <laughs> did you get some <laughs> did you get some weird fact to just pull out out of nowhere?" No. Uh when it comes to Umineko, I'm not going to talk about it very much right now because um, next week is the time I will talk about it. Um, okay. Given that I think I am roughly five hours from the very end. Um, if how long to beat is to anything to go by. And also with the pace it's been going at and the stuff like the story stuff it's hit, it's definitely near the end. <laughs> um, I will say it's really good. And the last chapter is really fascinating. Like, it's the rest of the story, all seven episodes or chapters, however you want to think of it before this, have been pretty heavy in the horror and mystery genre. And this last one is like, there's been almost no horror and like a little bit of mystery, but it's like all about catharsis. Like, like that's the whole point of it. Is it like, it it becomes way less fantastical and is more about like, you know, how do you recover after something like that? Basically kind of stuff. And it's really interesting. Like it's okay. They, they, they subvert the subversions all the time. And that one in particular has been really fascinating. So mm-hmm. aftercare, I think is what they call that. Yeah. That's a good way to put it, but uh, I haven't reached the very end. So I'm reserving my final opinions until, until that happens, which I'm probably going to finish either today or tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Which, which brings me to the next thing, the fact that I am almost done this 120, 130 hour game, uh, which mm-hmm. has been taking up all of my time. And also I should note, I don't want it to end. <laughs> I've reached that point <laughs> with it where it's like, fuck, I'm, I'm closing in on the end. And, oh, but these characters kick so much ass and it's so wonderful. I don't want it to end, but mm-hmm. it will. So what game should take its place? What, what should fill that, that void? Gears pop. Fuck. <laughs> How did I not see this coming? <laughs> should, uh, really should have seen that coming. Yep. No, uh, I mean, uh, let's, I don't. But this is I, basically my veiled way of saying, what do you think we should be talking about for game of the year? Things that you guys yeah. have, you all have really liked that I should it, also touch. As like, I mean, I'm, I I feel like I have started a billion games and not finished very many of them. Like I started Neo Two, I didn't I didn't even come close to finishing that. Um, I'm still plugging away at Wasteland, like halfway through that. Uh, Ori, I'm like at the beginning still, basically. <laughs> so there's like so many things where I'm like I've played a little bit of a lot of games and liked them, but. I have just not had it in me to like buckle down and finish something. That's that's the that's the joy of Game Pass is you have that game buffet where you can be like, oh, I'm gonna try a taste of this one and this one. Eh, this one's good. Mm-hmm. Let's finish this one. Yeah. yeah. I feel like I've been just in general not doing a great job with uh, regards to game of the year coming up later this year. So um I, I 
in terms of game of the year type games, uh, that's that's a tough question, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, the one I tentatively have next in my queue is uh, Spiritfarer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that uh, seems like a very yeah. you kind of game. Yeah, to be honest, yeah. uh, and that's one that I'm really interested in playing. So I'd, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on it. Yeah, it seems interesting from the conversations I've seen around it, but. Mm -hmm. Uh, I put a little, I haven't really talked about it, but I've put a little bit of, um, time into carry on. Did you put any time into that? Right. I don't know if I, I, I beat it. Mm. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I think I'm pretty close to the end on that. It's fine. And it's, it's pretty good. I, I don't know if I, it will necessarily be, I don't know. I don't know if I that's forgot about it. Would necessarily <laughs> like the, 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 I think I remember you guys talking about it on the podcast and mentioning yeah. that you wanted a, a map. And I was like, okay, I don't know. And then I'm playing it and I'm like, no, I need, I want a map in this game. Uh, yeah, it would have been nice, but eventually like it, yeah, eventually it didn't become an issue, but it, yeah. it is weird to not have a map. Yeah. In, in kind of a metroidvania. Um, how about, uh, how about Kukiyomi? <laughs> oh yeah uh, i mean that's, that's, that's... Two. is that is that eligible this oh year? shit if that's eligible it is gonna be on my list because i it is a weird ass game i, I don't know it's it's it you can usually get it for like i yep. it's it's not too expensive september 29th and... 2020 uh... so it was it was it was that recent <laughs> yeah fuck <laughs> It feels like I played that like a million years ago. Kukiyomi Consider It hit Steam March 29th, 2020. But what? Kukiyomi 2 on phones. What was... <laughs> but Allison Anyways, looks like she's going to break. <laughs> I feel, it feels like I played this like several months ago. March was several was, months ago. <laughs> I, 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 God, I guess I'm going to be... I'm going to... I'd say yeah, because you can get that game for pretty pretty dang cheap. Oh, um, and it's yeah. it's. Kukiomi it's... two came out in 20, 2017. Oh, okay. So just the localization, the North American yeah. English one, is this year. I I guess. Which we still I, okay. count. Right? And Android Android does yes, that is true. Android does not have the localized version. I can only see the Japanese version. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, I. I, I would I I I those games are weird as fuck, but I liked doing them, so I liked playing sure. through uh, them. So how? So I know we talked about this in the chat a little bit, Allison Eichenfell. Uh, have you come around on that, or oh, are you I still haven't gotten not... back. I I need to like give it a little bit more time, but at this point, I would still say no. Um, I mean, it's or maybe it's... or maybe. Or maybe its Alex description. Would... Its description sounds like a thing you would enjoy to a T. Exactly. A, a turn based tactical RPG about a group of troublesome magic students. Yes. Right. Like that's, that's yes. everything, Allison. Yes. And then I, it's like timing yeah. mechanics too. And you just like, it, it, like everything about it sounds like it's an Allison game. And it, and it's annoying that it, I didn't really get that much into it but it's something that i feel like i need to put more time into before the end of the year but um it's, it's also not very expensive and i think other people seem to pretty like it pretty well so it's um something i, I you know something to get mm -hmm. um to give a shot the Good one enough. i'm i the one that i want to play before the end of the year is the one have you seen that game that's like paper mario but you play as bugs like bugs bunny no like like insects no i have not uh let me see if i can find it um but um, andre i have two games to ask you about to see if they're worth yes touching uh, uh one bug fables one... bug fables no i have not heard of this yeah it's it, it's apparently the devs were really very much inspired by paper mario um like their early two paper marios which, July 6th, uh, 2019. Yeah. Sorry, Bug Fables. Not eligible. But I'll still give it a look. I haven't heard of this Oh, one. God damn it. I thought it was released this year. <laughs> no. It looks adorable, though. You're right. Yeah, you're I mean, like, I'm going to have to like, play it sooner or later. You play as a bee. 
like with a fluffy, Buck fluffy Bumble? jacket. Yeah, it's basically Buck Bumble meets Paper Mario. Sounds like perfect. Okay, okay so Andre, so my, my two for you. Resident Evil 3, yes or no? Is that worth playing? If you can, if you, if you can get it cheap, it's like if you liked Resident Evil 2, it's fine. It's not like amazing. It's not as groundbreaking or like I wouldn't even say two is groundbreaking. Just two is so good. And I think three misses out on a lot of that, but it's like solid. It's right. just not worth the price because the multiplayer I don't think is that good. Not it's not worth sixty dollars. It's like a thirty dollar at most, probably less, because it's pretty short. Okay. All right. It would and be the, uh, nice to have somebody else on the podcast to advocate for Origami King, but I don't think that'll happen. I I've been thinking about trying it, but we'll see. Um, so Andre, the last one I'll ask you about is Umarongi Generation. I did not touch it. That's a pack game. You're right, it is. But I thought you did too. I, I have not. Uh, oh, I've heard one great like things try. about it. Uh, I just have not touched it. What, Allison? What about sl- uh, was Sludge Life? Sludge Life. Yeah. That I, I would recommend. Can you still get it for free on the Epic Store? I, th- I think so. I think it's free for like a year. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I I don't know if it's something that I'll necessarily advocate for with like regards to uh, game of the year, but it is a weird ass game, and it's kind of and it's a fun time to to play through. Um, especially since it should, yeah, it's still free sale ends May 28th to 2021. So oh my God, uh, it's been devolver was like, Hey, it's going to be free for a, a year. So that's awesome. Yeah, right. no, it's, it's a weird game. And, and if you can get it for free, then there are a couple of like really surreal moments where I was playing it and going like, excuse me, what is, what is this game? So it, wonderful yeah if there there's like i get off let's Gross. see i've got like one uh-huh. i've got like one more month of work left and then i'm on vacation for the holidays mm. and like i'm gonna just try and burn through a bunch of stuff then ori if i'm not finished with wasteland by then then finish that uh neo 2 get back to it uh, probably play spider-man in there bug snacks uh i'm gonna be like, playing that bug snacks before the end of the year we're we're coming up on bug snacks real fast i'm so excited time to bug uh, snacks what is t that? minus a, a uh, it's like a week yeah it's the 12th a less, yeah it's a little less than a week that's thursday right? thursday yeah yeah well i i'm i'm gonna get that on ps4 I, because i can't get a playstation I am, right now I am pissed because so I have this is kind of jumping ahead, but uh, apparently uh, the what am I uh, so PS Five they're not doing they're like oh there's not going to be available in stores. Apparently yeah. they put some more up on Amazon in Japan uh, for pre order, and I have like the thing like notify me when it when something comes up for pre order, and they didn't notify me. Oh, that sucks. It's, unforgivable yep the notification so this is also getting ahead of ourselves because talking about news finding any kind of product launches for technology in 2020 Uh-oh. has been a fucking oh my nightmare. god it for yeah sh- it, yeah because I, I i tried getting one of the new ryzen cpus to finish my seat my my computer build Oof, we'll get there but 2020 sucks for for product launches and no, signing up for auto notifications which never go out <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, so I'm, I'm kind of just resigning myself to like, all right, these these first couple of games, uh, uh, Bug Snacks and Miles Morales, I'm going to be playing on my PlayStation Four. But, yeah. but, I hope you know, uh, Spider Man was good. Hopefully, there's nothing like too. I, mm-hmm. I was looking at some performance numbers. They seem iffy with the PS4 Pro, so we'll we'll see how it we'll see how it runs on my base ps4 yeah yeah Yeah. Yeah. there's not a control situation where it like becomes unplayable that would be unforgivable the original spider-man ran like beautifully on my my original playstation Mm. 4 so hopefully well they they changed his face and that just really oh yeah that'll that'll fuck it up it's like the performance 
you you mm -hmm. need so many resources to be able to render that face to render that beautiful elastic -y 23 year old skin <laughs> god that nobody yeah. asked for <laughs> adam jensen i didn't ask for this Yep. Like I, I guess I guess that'll be a, a thing to look out for when Miles Morales will, comes out. Uh, I'll I'll let everybody know how it runs on my base PS4. Yeah, God, so, I, I just don't even want to be on the podcast from like next week on because I'd be sad that I don't have a PS5. Would you? Do you? How much hope would you say you have about finding a PS5? Like but a lot, none. maybe a little. None. A I, little, little maybe hope. Maybe I could sit. Uh, uh, maybe a little hope uh, that I could find this super massive console uh, uh -huh. like Little uh, Dark Pictures Anthology, Little Hope by Supermassive Games. <laughs> we got that, there in the end. We got there. That one had layers. <laughs> um, whoa, Allison sounds really far away, like a oh. tiny girl running through the fog. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> in a spooky town. No, but actually, you sounded like really far away when you were was, laughing, and that was, was weird. Yeah, it was wonderful. It, um, it worked uh, out. Um, it, it sounded like a spooky laugh that a little girl might make when she is uh, following you through a spooky, dark town. Yeah, it's like you take a picture, and it's really dark, and then she's in that. Oh. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it's just like some fog, and you can't an, get out of the town. In an anthology. Yeah. Uh, an ant... H hology that's nothing <laughs> that's how <you> <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> it'd be really good if if hology was a word it but... would be it's an ants in a hall oh gee oh gee <laughs> uh so what, yeah, what did, okay you, you liked man of madan right it it was fine it's not they have not made a thing that lives up to until dawn so this is uh super massive creators of until dawn uh have been making an anthology series of horror games i believe there are going to be four of them this is the second one last year i played man of the dawn that came out in like august and little hope came out this year just before halloween mm -hmm. and each one they're totally disconnected they're not related to each other in any way except they're basically the same mechanically which is you're basically not point and click adventure but you're just you're basically playing a movie in some ways you're walking through like linear areas pretty linear in mm. these uh like the anthology games uh, until dawn was much more expansive and longer and had like much more branching stuff so these are much more limited experiences like four or five hours Right. So are, are they kind of quick time heavy, much like a heavy rain? Uh, the, yeah, heavy rain is pretty close. Um, so you're kind of wandering through areas. You're picking up like uh, newspapers, pictures, items that you find and do, getting is there, stuff. Is there a button, a button prompt to yell Jason? Uh, no. Every game should have that. Jason. There is Jason. 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 It's... <laughs> it's you know, it's the same kind of uh, mechanics they've been doing since Until Dawn, sure. which is, you know, you're yeah. you're hiding and you're, you know, you've got to do like some quick time events to uh, hide from the monster or to like climb up a thing or climb down without uh, scraping yourself. But there's no fail state at any point. Like mm. fail state is someone dies, but the story yeah. continues on because you're jumping between the perspective of like five or six characters. And each uh, each character could die at like a you know there are certain points where people can die. You can get monked. You can get monked. Yeah. And then that character will be out of the story, and this the rest will continue on. And maybe that means because that character isn't there, they would have saved someone else. So maybe that character is going to die later on. Uh, I actually made it through Little Hope without anyone dying, which I think nice. is the first time I made it through one of these like my first try without anyone dying, which was pretty neat. Yeah, congratulations. Yeah, go me. But, and I think it's actually stronger than Man of Medan was. Uh, maybe because I was kind of expecting, or I knew what to expect coming into this one. My expectations weren't as high as they were going into Man of Medan, just because of 
like uh, until dawn is probably my favorite horror game and one of my favorite games of this generation and like ever period just because the way it it so cleverly plays with horror tropes and like that experience and delivers it in a really great package that like understands when it should be campy and when to actually try to be scary and lets you because there's no fail state it doesn't feel like bad when something bad happens you're like oh i have to replay that thing and like deal with either being scared or it's not even scary anymore it just like you know whatever is going to happen uh and i we talked about this a little bit with amnesia rebirth where by taking the fail state out of a horror game it just it can like flourish and succeed and just focus on giving you the story and delivering the scares without slowing down the pace Mm -hmm. sure yeah because you're right because horror is best when you experience it the first time because you don't know what to expect but the second you die and experience the exact same like scenario again it becomes significantly less Right. I I experienced that when I was playing that game, uh, Little Nightmares, where there's a couple sections where I could not get through it for whatever reason. I was was just, like, messing up. But, like, only the first time you get through it is scary. Yeah, you start seeing the mechanics after that. Right. You start seeing the, okay, um, I've seen the fail state enough times that it does not shock me or it doesn't, you know, it doesn't affect me. That's why I love watching speedrunners go through like Silent Hill or Resident Evil is just because it's so funny watching like these very scary moments just be totally like you know run Resident around Evil 7 and like manipulated. Speedruns are great, um, but yeah, I, I like those too because it's just like people who are just like completely going nope i i don't doesn't affect me one bit Com- yep. completely numb to it uh, yeah just, yeah. just going through it's alien great. isolation being like yeah hey, whatever just uh, whatever uh-huh, yeah. dude who's on fire it's fine <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh and speaking of silent hill this game has intense silent hill vibes i've seen a couple of the playthroughs and i get like the atmosphere feels extremely silent hill the atmosphere the setting kind of like yeah, every everything about this game is very Silent Hill, uh, like everything about this game except the way you play it. Just because it's um, it's you know it's like mostly any action takes place in the cutscenes, uh, which is fine, uh, and like there's there's challenge to it because it's not just like straight oh push A push B push triangle or you know push Y. It's like, you know, oh, this one I have to uh, I have to like actually try and like throw a thing or like kick a thing. So I have to line up the reticle and get it in time and stuff like that. So it works. I, I think that when it until dawn again, going back to until dawn, it was so good because it was PS4 exclusive. They like really use the dual sense for mm-hmm. like certain things or not the dual sense, the uh, dual shock. Uh, yeah. Say. That'd be pretty the cool. Dual shot ahead of the curve. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, man, if a Supermassive made one of these games with like the Dual Sense in mind and used all those features, that would probably be really good. Because they did cool stuff like uh, you used the the motion control and you had to like hold really still to like not get like caught at a point mm. or at certain points. So that was like a neat thing. And then you know, using the touch bar for just like to flip through like pages of stuff was. Not necessary, but it was, you know, a neat gimmick. Uh, but yeah, I'd say Little Hope, if you're going, if you're interested in the dark picture stuff, I'd say Little Hope is probably the better one to look at first, just because, but maybe Man of a Dawn is the first one, to, is the better one to look at first, because like, well, it, are, it's are, not as good. I don't know. Do, do they have similar tone? Like, is it a haunting of hill house versus haunting of Bly manor type situation where they, they are completely they, different they're 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 different uh okay. yeah they're very different one is uh little hope is a little more psychological and uh whereas um man of Adon is like ghost like kind of like a we're scary we're in a scary ship where a scary ship versus scary town, like, you know, that kind of vibe. Sure. And there's pirates. Uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's a whole thing. 
the, it, there's like Salem witch trial stuff going on in uh, Little Hope. That's like one of the things that's huh. is uh, it, driving is the story. It, is it set in New England? Uh, yes, I don't. It's somewhere in the Northeast, but it's not. It's not in Salem, but it's like witch trials going sure. on, and that's a big driving point of the story. Uh, so yeah, yeah, I would I would recommend Little Hope pretty strongly to anyone who's interested in horror games and willing to put up with like a more cinematic horror experience uh, from a game as opposed to like a Resident Evil like actiony horror type. Yeah, awesome. But, yeah. Wow, we're, we're done with games already. Wow. It's so quick. I know. We're not even an hour in. Yeah, my God. Yeah. Let's let's just stretch this next part out for about two and a half hours, and we'll be good. I mean, I can oh, I can tell you I can tell you about the games I returned on Steam this week. <laughs> not not because they're bad, just they they were too much for me. Cud. But uh, yeah, Caves of Cud. Oh my God, that game! Holy shit! <laughs> Uh, no. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about Caves of Cud real quick. Uh, it's a uh, it's a roguelike. It's, it like in so many ways, it is a roguelike. You are it's kind of like dwarf fortressy almost, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's got like very simple like ASCII, like not ASCII, but like that type of like very simple like old computer art uh like very simple colors and images on screen and it just kind of puts you in and is like here's a bunch of proper nouns and shit and do you want to roll a character or do you want to like make your own character and i'm just like i'm roll me a character i have no idea what i'm doing and then you know get into this village i'm like okay i guess i'm going to talk to this guy okay he says something about I got to go to the Northwest, I guess. I don't know. And talk to this guy. Okay. There's someone to the North and I go North and then I'm dead in like two minutes, not even two minutes, like 30 seconds. I'm like, okay. I'm restart and do that again. Dead in 30 seconds. <laughs> uh, and like, it was, that oh. was, I, yeah, no, it was really brutal. Um, people say it's got like a really good story going for it. I have no idea myself absolutely zero i could not even begin it's a very <laughs> dense game with like you know character sheets and a bunch of abilities like you've got there's like a burrowing claws ability where you can just like dig through walls and like you know so that seems like it'd be pretty good but i just went you know what this seems cool for people who want to put a lot of time into this this is not i don't have the patience or the capacity to learn this game. Uh, it's in early access. It's like 15, yeah, 15 bucks in early access. Everyone seems, everyone who likes it seems to really like it. And their community is, uh, they're doing a lot of work to make sure their community doesn't suck. Hmm. I started following their community manager on Twitter because I was seeing him talk about, like when the game started blowing up, yeah, because it's been in early access for a few years now, and it just recently like shot to the top of the charts for some reason. Uh, apparently, they have started having like conversations with everyone who joins the Discord to make sure they're not shitty people. That's interesting. <laughs> like, yeah, it's so a, they like a vetting okay. process. Yeah, yeah, they're like vetting like all the people. They have like substantial conversations with people before they're like, okay, you're chill. Uh, is my understanding from following the the community manager on Twitter. Uh, yeah, so Caves of Cud on Steam, really intense roguelike with a lot of like story and lore and abilities and mm. all sorts of stuff. That there's like daily. They have a lot in there. It seems like a very fully featured thing already. I'm not sure how much more they have to go, but I imagine it's probably close to done since it's like blowing up so much but maybe i don't know That's interesting yeah that i don't know why that reminds me but did you do, do either of you have the desire to play rogue which is now on steam and is classified as a roguelike <laughs> that's that is very funny they should have made a new tag that just said rogue they should have <laughs> that could only be applied to rogue yeah. uh, <laughs> not but, 
I forgot that was a thing. Does that uh, not particularly, but m maybe as like a curiosity. Yeah, to, like, it's, it's it'd be interesting, I think, to to look at. But at the same time, I don't know if I necessarily need to put a lot of time into it. But it's, it's right. interesting, and it's it's very funny that it's on there as a roguelike. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. it's the it's that's what it is. It, it's it's oh, yeah. it's, it's it, like it that. It, it is very yeah, much like that, like almost a hundred percent like that. Oh yeah, I for, <laughs> like I forgot because I saw it come up, and then it, I was like, "Oh, like Frog Fractions Two makes so much more sense now." Right. Totally. Because like there, yeah, like and this, yeah, Frog Fractions Two was just like we're doing a rogue now. I'm like, oh, okay. Straight up. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I had no idea when I played that earlier this year. <laughs> yeah, but this year has been really interesting back to caves of cud for um games that came out a long time ago and then suddenly mm -hmm. got really popular yeah like between this and among yeah. us like i have no idea why caves of cud blew up but yeah <laughs> you don't know where like the the, I, the, the, I, the fuse was lit. sure <laughs> yeah i'm not sure like how like what caused it to just um blow up like that because it's yeah, it's early access. It's a very tough, intense game, and it was like top seller in like that category for a while. It's it's number four on Steam in the roguelike, like mm -hmm. underneath Hades, Risk of Rain, Binding of Isaac, Rebirth. But it was above all of that stuff for a little bit. Yeah. So, yeah, good for them. Yeah, that is uh, really interesting, though. I'm glad it's working out for them, and I'm glad there's like games like that for people. Totally. But it was just like this is. I gave it a shot and I went, oh no, this is not for me. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and that's okay because, hey, Steam lets you refund games. But uh, now we can get into the news. There's a lot of it Yay. this week. Yeah, there yeah. is a lot. It seems of it. like there's a lot. Maybe we don't need to talk too much about it. Yeah, there's, there's, yeah. there's a lot, but there's some we, of it. Some, some yeah. of them we can skim over. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, first big thing this week, well, yeah, Extra Life, we talked about at the top of the show, Extra mm -hmm. Life is happening uh, all across the gaming industry. Uh, people are streaming for children's hospitals. That's Yeah, it's all for children's hospitals. Yeah. Uh, so go, go find your favorite streamer or find your favorite Gaming Fix podcast co-host, Pat Cotter, on Twitch, on this very channel. Uh twitch at twitch slash gaming fix fix podcast what is what is it alex fix podcasts fix podcasts on twitch where you can watch pat fly around the world and microsoft flight simulator 2020 and probably also will play some like jackbox maybe or some yeah, yeah. or something something like there. that yeah and, and and the thing that he's doing is he's visiting airports near uh all of us uh yeah. all of the fixed people yeah. so that'll be kind of fun to see you know where we're he all is, at and he's simulating the flight simulating that yeah <laughs> with he is stimulating the flight i don't know what that means huh. yeah i don't either <laughs> stimulating your twitch stream with some scintillating uh scintillations okay um <laughs> the ps5 and xbox <laughs> series reviews are have hit this week what, what whatever are we gonna that call, means what are we going to call that are we just going to call the it the xbox. xbox okay i mean well if any of us ever get one then we'll refer to it as the console that they have but in the meantime it's just the xbox okay mm -hmm. Because they all, all currently all the games play on all the Xboxes, so yeah. And calling it the series is so weird. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. is very weird. I, I don't think I'd ever do that, but I mean, it's it's accurate, but it's weird. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, it's not wrong. <laughs> it's just very weird. It's a it's an un, it's a an annoying name. It's an annoying name. Uh, so yeah, the the reviews hit. They that are, people say hey these consoles sure do play the old games well but they yeah, can't really there's... talk about the new games so right. like you know what good is a console review without the games 
That's what a very good, good question. Is a console review without the games? Uh, I think there's value to it though, because the UI matters. The user, like yeah. UI and UX, user experience, user interface, they both matter. Sure. Yeah, and, and you're starting to see a lot of stuff, like a lot more stuff, like the what the deal is with the dual sense and everything and it, it's just uh, yeah like i mean that that stuff is all valuable but like calling it a review seems very silly and putting a number on it is very silly uh yeah, just from yeah uh, that's true giving it a number does seem kind of arbitrary especially because it's going to change mm-hmm. yeah with any with any year probably D- oh yeah I mean, I mean i mean that's kind of the name of the game right now especially since uh a lot of these places are like, well, we need to have a review out of the PlayStation 5, but it, none of the games are necessarily exclusive yet. Uh, well, so. And we can't talk about any of the games yet because they're all embargoed. So right. here's a review that doesn't mention, it mentions Spider-Man and that's it. Uh, yeah. You know, which people seem to really like, uh, which is nice that everyone seems very into spider-man miles yeah. morales one jeff gersman has been quoted as saying the story was lovely yeah, yeah which that, that... i was surprised to see because i believe he was not super into the first spider-man game like he didn't yeah. hate it but it just wasn't his uh his jam so yeah so i that that was one of those tweets where i was like all right i'm i'm, I'm hype about miles morales mm-hmm. but another thing that people seem very positive on is the dual sense controller uh, yeah, everybody keeps talking about uh, Astro's Playroom, which is the uh, follow-up. One, yeah. Which is the first uh, level of Astro's Playroom. <laughs> yeah, but that it, that it, that it feels very that it really shows off the Dual Sense. And it's yes. funny because I feel like when we watched the PlayStation Five event, Astro's Playroom is the kind of the thing we all kind of laughed at. We we're like, oh, that looks like garbage, or like I, that, and like the Sackboy game, it was it was kind of dismissive towards them. But now everyone's like very and now hot people are like no it's, it's it's legitimately pretty good but it's like yeah. but it's also really just it's it's also really showing off the the dual sense yeah in... it's it's almost a tech demo in that sense it, yeah right. it's it's there to say hey look at all this cool shit we can do uh mm-hmm. not like you know it's... yeah mu- yeah much like how knack was there to show off the particle system like yeah. that was the genesis how many rubber of this ducks game. they could fit inside knack so. essentially and this is Hey, we made a game that made that dual sense make sense, and it kicks it kicks some big booty. Yeah. The yep. one thing that also came out is that when you're using every single feature of the dual sense, the battery battery life is not great. Oh um, my god! Yeah. Supposedly, maybe two hours while playing Astro's Playroom, like that. right? But it's like it crazy. Yeah, but apparently it's only for games that are like like Astro's Playroom, where it's very intensive like playing a normal game it's it seems seems pretty comparable to the dual shock for but still that's, it's like two like, hours is wild i feel like like that and that's only going to go down like the yeah. longer that battery lo- lives like its life cycle is going to go down how, so how can we make like an iphone last like seven hours but a, a game controller can't last more than two hours like you're, I know you're, they're doing different stuff, but like, if your if your game controller lasts for more than two hours, consult your doctor. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, uh, so yeah, the people like these new consoles. They play, uh, they play ga- the old, old games. games well. well. <laughs> yeah, which is uh, weird that people are focusing. Well, I mean, it's not that weird actually. That's, well, that's, that's, that's all that's they can really talk, talk about. about. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I mean, th- there's such a like a limited lo- launch library for all of these anyways, so Yeah. I, I mean, that's all there is to play on the Series X and Series S really. So I you know, there's like some newer stuff, but a lot of it is just going to be the old older games or, yeah. you know, cross-gen stuff. So Yeah, like you've got Yeah, um, or like, like Assassin's Deluxe Creed Deluxe versions or yeah. Like Valhalla yeah. is really the only super new thing. Well, it's a Yakuza. Manga. Yeah, Yakuza and and Valhalla. God, Yakuza is coming out next week. Fuck. Oh, that's right. It, it, do you know? I asked this in our chat, and I never never found out. Is it coming oh. to PC Game Pass? Because I would totally. Play I it on. don't know. I've yeah, tried I, to find out, but yeah, I've, I've I tried want to. It. I've Googled, and I. I'm, I'm going to play it no matter what, but yeah, I, I'm unsure. But yeah, well, it looks yeah. it looks it looks great. Mm-hmm. 
Yes, there's like a Mario Kart mini game in it. Um, of <laughs> course there is. Of like, course there is. Where you actually drive the carts and you have like weapons that you use. I don't oh know how God. it plays, but that sounds I mean, so good. Yakuza does well with those those there's, mini games. So there's like yeah. a Pokedex for the for the baddies. Oh man. Okay. And, yeah, and like now so, you're like <laughs> no, like do I need to the, buy Yakuza? So Probably. it's. A, yeah. So yeah, I was listening to the Beast cast and they were explaining it. And this has also been in like the pre-release coverage. Is uh, so Ichiban, the the protagonist, is a big Dragon Quest fan. Yeah, and which also, is why he's also he's uh, he's also a cup noodle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so he's a big Dragon Quest fan, which is why the game is now turn-based for the combat. Is because he sees everything as like a JRPG. <laughs> That's great. And so, and oh, then, so, so he that starts seeing the, the enemies. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. And then That's he starts fun. seeing the enemies as like archetypes, which is why there's the Pokedex or like you know, mm. like the bestiary or whatever, where everyone's just like, oh, this is like this kind of uh this is a steamed punk. At this time of year. Mm-hmm. Localized entirely this, within whatever city this is Yokohama. set in. Yokohama. Oh, Yokohama. Yokohama. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that'll be. I'm God. I'm so excited for that game. That's yeah, gonna that, be. Mm. It seems great. They've they released yeah. a couple of the karaoke tracks. It's oh, fuck, yeah. yeah. I know, but it's good. Okay. Yeah. All right. Wait. Well, one more piece of PS5 news. Yeah. Uh, a few weeks ago, when they did the un the like the teardown of the PS5, I asked y'all. What do you think the chances are of someone selling side plates for the PS5, like mm-hmm. custom 3D printed side plates, and what would you want on them? And someone else had a similar idea and made uh, PlateStation5.com. Which is a great They name. probably listened to this podcast. Hey, listener, did you make PlateStation5.com? <laughs> Were you Isn't approached it? by Sony's lawyers and a set who said, hey, cut it out. That's ours. Uh so yeah, the, so people were trying to sell custom side panels for the PS5 and they made PlayStation.com and Sony was like, I don't think so. That's not uh, acceptable. Abs- no. Absolutely <laughs> not. So they were like, okay, custom- customize my plates.com and Sony went, no, the, the plates are ours too. Uh, but this, this website, the idea was you get custom colors for your PS5 for like the white bits. So you could have like a blue PS5 or a mm-hmm. red PS5, black PS5, you know, whatever you want. And, and that sucks because I don't expect Sony to actually sell like plates or like side panels. They're just not going to do it. But yeah, probably not. I mean, Maybe they're seeing that there's a demand for it, but I don't know if they would. I, I feel like that would be, you got to like come out with that. I guess you don't have to come out with that to start, but I feel like that would be like, hey, if you don't want the white, we've got the black or we got the blue or the red it, it, or we got Han Solo frozen in carbonite. If it was at least a bullet point on some mm-hmm. sheet somewhere where they were like, mm-hmm. um, yeah. Oh, hey, sorry breaking news oh mass effect mm-hmm. legendary edition coming 2021 for consoles and pc confirmed just now okay um anyways yeah if the side plates <clears throat> were uh some bullet point somewhere where they've pointed to and be like yes we intend to do something with these then i would be like okay yeah there's a point there but now that like the fact that they're just kind of coming out and being like no you can't do that that's shitty mm-hmm. like that that comes across i I have not felt warm fuzzies about Sony's management for a long time. And this just kind of continues to make me feel that way. It, yeah. yeah. It, it just feels like, I don't know. I mean, I can understand if they were just like at plate station maybe, but like when it's yeah, like, yeah, sure. That I can be like, like, yeah, like you're like, it's a little bit weird, but you kind of get it. Whereas then you, uh, but when it, when you start, I don't know, let people mod their systems. I guess I don't know. Yeah, it's like it's gonna happen. It's just gonna be like people sending, like you know, like gray market people just sending. Right. Hey, will you print out this like three D model for me and then get it shipped to them, and then they or there or or there'll be like 
people selling them on like eBay or Etsy or, you know. Totally. Yeah. It, Etsy, Etsy, is a great, it's, it's, Etsy is a great point. Yeah. Like yeah, if it's going to exist it's, anywhere. It's, and, and then they'll say like side plates for current gen console and it's like, or something like that. Like there's a lot of content on, on places like Etsy that are like skirting, uh, Copyright, copyright law. infringement. Yeah. 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 Where they're just like, oh, it's just inspired by it. And it's like, you know, mm-hmm. it, it's going to happen one way or another. So, yeah. But so, but it, showing that you're like, nah, I'm going to shut this down kind of makes it feel like, I don't you know. You can't yeah. compromise Mark Cerny's vision. <laughs> <laughs> he needs those ears. So but they've been apparently I can't figure out how to do it, but there is like Sony has been doing that like ear stuff for a while. <laughs> uh, like because I've got like they've got like a 360 audio thing and like you. I've oh, got yeah, the no, app that's that true. you're supposed to do it with, but it doesn't let me take pictures of my ears. I just love this. It only works with like three like apps like it works with like title D's and nugs or something. Deezer? I don't know. Deezer. Is Deezer a a Sony thing? I didn't think so. No, no, it's just no, it's not a Sony thing, but it's just oh, okay. they're like one of the people who have partnered with Sony to do oh, like okay. 360 audio stuff. Gotcha. Uh yeah. But I can't figure out how to take pictures of my ears because it's not in the app. So I don't Well I don't better, know. Better to start taking super high fidelity pictures of your ears just to have them in your back pocket. Just in case. Yeah. In case I run into Mark Cerny. So here, can you commit this to memory? Put, put them on Snap. Put them on Snapchat. No, put them on Instagram because even if you delete them, they'll still be there. Uh, this, it's this is OnlyFans. Oh jeez, an OnlyFans for Andre's ears. If you'd like an Only <laughs> an OnlyFans uh, for my ears, send an email to gaming at fix dot space. Oh god, am I gonna have to oh. register an OnlyFans account for our, we- our podcast no. so no one else steals it? Uh, you know, if someone wants that, uh, go for it. But if you start making money, <laughs> believe us, we'll we'll get you. Okay. Uh, okay. Next news story. That one went off the rails. Uh, <laughs> Tony Hawk's Pro Skater One and Two Remaster got a big update with a bunch of new challenges, the ability to replay tours with individual skaters, mm-hmm. and a bunch of Crash and Bandicoot gear. What? Okay. Yeah. Sure. Is like Crash Bandicoot in the game, or is it just like I can wear like an orange shirt? I think it's stuff like you can get. I haven't looked actually at the stuff, but from what I've seen, it looks like decks with uh, Crash okay. on it, and yeah, some attire and stuff, things of that nature. Okay, that game's That's, good. I guess so. Uh, it's a good excuse okay. to get back to it. That's yeah. It's nice that they like went. Oh yeah, people want to replay this game with different skaters and stuff. So that makes sense. Yeah, because that was one weird that it wasn't in there. Yeah, I was gonna say that it is one of the things that was a little strange about the initial Mm -hmm. release that you couldn't like replay stuff and have it reset. All progress was permanent, basically. Mm -hmm. Uh, Next news story was Mass Effect is gonna be uh, was teasing something, but we just heard uh, Mass Effect coming in twenty twenty one. The trilogy, all the single player DLC, uh, enhanced shaders better frame rate resolution all that stuff uh sure yeah i was talking about this with a friend of the podcast cheska yesterday um Mm -hmm. being like i love mass effect she also loves mass effect but i don't know if i'm gonna replay all those like especially not just all like one at a time but like i was thinking like what is something they could do to get me to play that and um I think if they changed some of it, if they kind of made better on the promise for three, that would actually mm-hmm. make me want to replay one and two. Like if it was like, oh yeah, mm-hmm. now now we're incorporating a lot more of the decisions you've actually made in a meaningful way, or like uh, it actually has some agency over the ending which we've changed, or something like that. Like mm-hmm. I I would be interested in that, but if it's just straight up on a remaster, I played those on PC. They look, already look pretty good. So. Yeah, that's uh, that's what yeah, this sounds the games like. Look is just good. I I mean, I'd still be interested in playing them again, um, but I, I'm interested to see what they what they try to do with it. Yeah, I never played the DLC for three, 
uh, which is it's my own. I didn't either, and I always but... really wanted to play the Citadel DLC. Yeah, apparently it's um, really good. Yeah, I've... and I've heard nothing but good things, but I got frustrated with the fact that the DLC never went on sale. So uh, yeah, uh... I've also watched Alex Navarro play through Mass Effect One and Two, and at least part of Three so far. I need to get mm-hmm. back to watching the rest of Mass Alex. But uh, yeah, so like I've already watched like that entire story kind of go through recently. So I don't know that I need more Mass Effect in my life right now. But yeah. hey, uh, neat that it's going to be playable uh, on all consoles or at least on like the PS5. It'll yeah. be playable on the Xbox I, already. It, but, you know, if it comes to Switch, versions. that's pretty good. I, I haven't seen if it's clarified that it's coming to Switch, but like that would be that'd be a good place to play those games. The, God, Mass Effect Three ran like doo doo on the consoles. At least on the PS3, it just like the frame rate was so bad. Like I, I forgot that it was so bad, and I was like, before Andromeda came out, I was like, oh, I'll revisit my save on three. I was replaying it, like doing my Renegade run or whatever, and I was loaded into like the hangar on the Citadel, and I was like, oh no, <laughs> this is like sub twenty FPS. This is oh God, that's that's rough. Yeah, not great, but it's, uh, yeah, Mass Effect, uh, good for, good. hopefully they put out a good version of this. Does, it doesn't sound like they're going to be, like, changing much about one, which is, like, probably the one that needs the most, like, hands-on I, stuff, just, like, mechanically no, for, like, the is, combat, but. I think one is fine i mean it's like it's fine i mean like i think that the biggest thing that is frustrating are the mako controls which i mean have been memed about a million times but i feel like i I don't know i never had an issue with the combat so um i I just i I think two and three are like so much like tighter mechanically uh that it would just be but you yeah have to, i mean like, it rebalance is but... the entire like experience f- to like change that combat i think so but maybe they're doing something i don't i don't know yeah i actually i think i like i'm not gonna say i'm gonna, not gonna qualify this but uh i think i might enjoy the first one the most out of the three mm-hmm. just because i like the story the most like the, yeah, whole, the whole thing with that's... saren and all that that's the thing is, uh, like, I, I really like all of the games, but I feel the least attached to the crew in two. Which is personally, weird, given is that weird. It's, it, this whole story is the crew. <laughs> right. But it's like, I, I feel like, yeah, it, it's, I don't know. I, I feel you tell me Morden oh, he's singing he's Gilbert great. and I mean, Sullivan just didn't, like, that was a great make moment. you. <laughs> that moment I mean, was amazing. I like, model, I, I like, scientist, a Larry, and... I like so the he that was very good. And I liked the characters in two. It was just like I feel like I don't know. I, I felt the least attached to it and, and I play those games mostly for the story beats and the characters and hanging out with them. So Yeah. Um and another piece of news just hit as we're talking. Oh. Um, quote from a GameSpot article. Many of us assumed that Bioware was going to announce a Mass Effect trilogy collect trilogy collection today during N seven day. Uh but we didn't expect this other piece of news. A new Mass Effect game is in development. Uh, okay. Yes. <laughs> As the one person here, one person alive that is like, likes to Andromeda. Yeah. Uh, details on the project I... are extremely scarce, but Bioware is working on the quote, next chapter of the Mass Effect universe. And it will feature a quote, veteran team from the company. Okay. Uh, Mass Effect pop. Yeah, and uh, emphasis on veteran team because one of the things that came out about Andromeda is that was one of their newest teams, and mm. that's where a lot you of know, the animation probably, like... animation jank came from and writing jank. Yeah, well, that's, that's that all, makes sense. Yeah. That game also suffered. It sounded like from one of the things we talked about with Cyberpunk, where they fucked around for a long time coming up with stuff and went, "Oh, we need to put like a game out." And then also scrapped the entire thing and thing Destiny did where they scrapped the entire thing like a year before release and then had to rebuild basically the entire game in like a year or like, you know, the narrative and like stuff like that. So, uh, yeah. Hmm. Uh, I, depending on what they do, I could be interested in another Mass Effect game. 
Yeah. I don't think I they've mean... poisoned the well so bad like some people. Uh, I think the Bioware well has been poisoned quite a bit. I think it's rough. I mean, I, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. Like, we're going to be talking a little bit more about Anthem later, um, but at the same time, I had exactly zero interest in Anthem. But yeah. even though uh, Andromeda, I, like as somebody that liked it, it was janky. It was not, you know, the best game. It, it also like the first planet is the worst planet, so it, like <laughs> does not start on a good like on a good foot. Where mm-hmm. you're just like the the start of the game is like by far the worst part of the game. So which it does not lead to people. The end was like, pretty bad. Oh, uh, the end was. Uh, I, for, yeah, I don't know. I I personally I I didn't play it, but I wasn't super interested in the main character. Also, that being a thing. Yeah, um, I don't know. It's. Uh, I, I I think that it's rough for Bioware, but I feel like people are still so excited about the original Mass Effect trilogy that I think people could come around on a new Mass Effect game. I would hope so. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I think they just have to s- probably steer away from Andromeda. Um, uh, unfortunately, yeah. I, I'd like to see more of the characters in Andromeda, but I know that's not necessarily going to happen. <laughs> Yeah. But... All I remember is PB. Oh right, it's all I, I forgot remember. about There's PB. A Krogan. I don't remember. I don't remember the Krogan's name. Jal was my boy. Was. I love Jal, but was it, wasn't there a Lady Turian also? The, probably. I that yeah. now I don't familiar. even remember. Yeah, that's. <laughs> I don't remember anything about Mass Effect Andromeda. Like I, I played it. I didn't think it was as terrible as a lot of people said. But I thought I was pretty disappointed by the story they told and like how they decided to do that narrative because when they're like, we're going to a new galaxy, uh, you know, yeah. new, like a whole new place. I was like, oh, okay, we'll get new like alien species and new people. And there are two new like sentient alien species in that game. Mm-hmm. And one is one are your allies and one are bad guys. And then the rest is yeah. all just uh, the rest is everyone you've seen before. Not even everyone you've seen before. It's like, because there are still here's... certain ships that were like, they're, they're like yeah. their justification is like, Oh, there are certain ships. They got like, lost on the way. Yeah, yeah. They haven't arrived. Uh, so that yeah. was, yeah. Didn't, wasn't it like all of the, whatever Tali's race, like they didn't show up because their ship yeah. was still on the way or something like that. Uh-huh. Yeah. And like what, the Krogan what, what, were with them, their, I think. What's the, 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 the mask people? Uh, the, now. why am I blanking on that name? Va- mm. Oh no. We're going to get messages about this, aren't we? Oh my God. I, and I feel bad because I love Tali too. Yeah, no, me too. Thing. And it's like they Tali's always... one of my favorite characters. Was it Quarian? Yes. Quarian. yes. Yeah, yes, because yes. The, there was the Geth that in the core yeah geth and corian did not like geth each other <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah yeah Turian, I, Turians, Krogan. Yeah. Uh, I looked it up vetra nix is the name of the your buddy in mass effect andromeda and she is indeed a lady Turian. okay anyway uh yeah so yeah i liked i liked the new um i like the new species the what is it let me find it um The... the new species, the <laughs> where are you? Angara. Angara, yeah, I liked uh... them a lot, and I thought that was fu- I thought that was an interesting thing with the, having that kind of first contact type thing. Um, but it would have been nice if there was more of that. For sure. Yeah, it 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 was. Uh... But I yeah but it was gonna it was... be hard to live up to expectations with that game and... oh yeah absolutely but i feel like yeah i feel like they really missed the mark on what that game could have it could been. have been oh absolutely i think that's i think that's exactly right where i think it's a it's a fine game on its own but when you compare it to the original mass effect trilogy and when you compare it to what the game could be it falls flat for sure. Yeah. Um, it's like one of it's, 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 it's a game that like, if, if it was just like released on its own, I think people would be like, Oh, this is good. But like, 
in comparison to all of those other things, it, it, it falls flat. It was kind of a one-two punch, maybe even more than that, with people being down on uh, Mass Effect 3, and then people being some people being down on Dra- Dragon Age Inquisition. Like, Which I thought it was nice. good, but... I thought Inquis- it was good, Inquisition but, but... is a weird-ass game because I've tried to play it a million times and I've never finished it because I think the quest design is kind of bad, but... Yeah, but like, so people weren't in love with Mass Effect 3 or Inquisition and then Andromeda and people are just like, ah, is Bioware relevant anymore? And then you got... Yeah. You got, you got, got, the, other, you got the other one, which maybe we should Anthem, talk about. Which... Yeah, so, uh, Anthem. Anthem. Yeah. Anthem. Uh, Anthem, their still secret wet work team still plugging away at making Anthem a game people want to play in sometime in the future, probably on the PS5 or Xbox Series X or S. Uh, they put out an actual like substan- substantive like post where they said, Hey, here's what we've been working on, and like here's some uh, like screenshots to prove it's not just all theory. Like you know, well, there's yeah. actual work being done. Uh, there's like a GIF, so there's some animation there too. <laughs> there's so like a real like... GIF. Yep. So you know, uh, uh, I have I have not read the what they put out. I don't have context for what the things they have changed are because I never played it. So, what kind of stuff did they do to make it? more appealing so uh, let's see okay there is you can change your equipment out in the world which you could not do before what? you had to like go back to the hub and like re like redo all your loadout if you wanted to change huh. like your guns okay. uh <laughs> yeah so you had to go back and uh i believe oh god what was it i don't have the list in front of me uh They've changed the way that Ida or that like the different uh, like sub weapons work, like in power up. I can't remember if they're doing away with like rarity on them, and you're just upgrading them. I, I, I honestly, I I didn't yeah. look super closely at it because like That's I'm right. just yeah. I'm... When they put it out, I'll check it out because I still I think Anthem was compelling. It just was too too messy or like too unrefined yeah uh, but yeah. i really liked playing what i played yeah i'm I'm skimming through it now it looks like they're adding like a bunch of skill tree stuff which is kind of interesting mm-hmm. like yeah. it, 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 it's making it look more and more like destiny as someone looking mm-hmm. in from the outside to both of those games which you know that's fine like that's a good blueprint to pull from because people like destiny uh yeah but i don't know it'd be interesting if anthem pulls a no man's sky or like a yeah. Rainbow Six Siege, where it's put out initially and not received very well, but they iterate on it and they make it better and they make it better to the point where it's what you want. Like that would be the ideal outcome, in my opinion. That'd be ideal. Yeah. I don't know if yes. it's possible. <laughs> I mean, like I think a big part of No Man's Sky doing that was that it had that really passionate indie team, you know, that really wanted to make like they had an idea yeah. in their mind for this game and they were going to make it. Are, I mean, I'm sure that there are people, I, I know that there are people at EA that worked really, really hard on Anthem, but are there a lot of people that are just like really passionate about what Anthem could be? I would hope that's what this team is. Um, yeah. And I would hope it would uh, make people more passionate. Yeah. Like if it's, because if like, they put out a good thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're, they're really trying to like revamp the loot and like do a lot of stuff. And so it's hard to say what it's going to come out as, but at least it sounds like a step in the right direction. Yeah. Oh, totally. And it's nice to see that they are still trying to do something with it. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. But this all still seems very early. So it's hard to say like, when is this going to come out? Yeah. Uh, is it going to be, is it next year? Is it 2022, 2023? Like, yeah. Totally. At, at that point, do you just have to say it's a new game? Like, right. what, do you, what do you do at that point? Uh, Cause like, yeah. No Man's Sky, that took, was that like a year for like it to finally, it's like to them do that, uh, for them yeah, to do that first that. update. Yeah. Well, uh, and get it yeah. to like where people are like, oh, okay, this is cool. Yeah, they yeah, had to deal. They, they had kept to, iterating uh, on that. I feel bad for that team. They had to deal with so much bullshit. Like Sean Murray, especially, had to deal with so much 
hate. They had to deal with so many people, like. Well, also, like, their studio flooded and. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. God. Oh, yeah, you're right. I forgot about that. uh, Yeah, so even without all that, like, garbage, that's, you know, uh, feel bad for, like, any game dev because they all get that bullshit. Uh, You know, Call of Duty, people get it. Uh, Indie devs get it for no reason. Uh, Yeah, it sucks. Stop being assholes to the devs who make these wonderful games that we all play. Yeah, don't be assholes to devs. That, like, I feel like you could say that a whole, about a whole lot of the, our news items every week is because that's oh. always true. I mean, Interesting. If the devs are so, the assholes first, and you know that's uh, within the past. Don't send people death threats, though. Just yeah. don't. Oh, never, to, never, never, to, never. Sorry to pull us back. What? Because it's the most relevant news we could talk about at the moment. Within the past oh. 30, 30 seconds, uh, Bioware has put up an official blog post, including oh. a first oh. look a first look at the new Mass Effect. Uh, so I have sent oh. that to our chat. Um, if you scroll down, it looks like you can see that screenshot. And that is a very interesting and appealing screenshot that they've put there. Um, that looks Legendary very Star Wars. That is, is that a binary star system? <laughs> Like, Wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. That is like giving me them Star Wars vibes. Yeah, right? no, that is incredibly Star uh, Wars. And I just looked, if you open up the thing, that is called a mud skipper. Like if you open okay. up the file, if you look at the source, mm-hmm. that is called a mud skipper. So maybe it's going to involve more No Man's Sky kind of stuff of like hopping planet to planet. In which case, that sounds fucking awesome. That sounds <laughs> gonna be like beyond good and evil too. <laughs> yeah uh sorry okay. i'm just re- i'm just skimming this article to see if we can pull out anything new um it doesn't look like it it doesn't look like it either yeah that's cool i i will reserve a very small amount of enthusiasm about this tentatively I'm, excited because yeah, I'm, I'm hesitant but but willing to what if willing, hesitant, to, but like, willing, I love willing to love original, again i love mass effect a lot so i I really hope. Like, I, I want to hope that it's good. Because... What if there's a baby Krogan? <laughs> <laughs> carry over, baby, baby Yoda. Yeah, carry baby Rex with you. Okay, that sounds really good. <laughs> it just goes, Shepard. Rex is Cure. a good ca- Rex is one of my favorite characters, so I would be excited about that. Cure oh. the genophage. Now you, you just... It's just a daycare simulator. Just, you just Krogan, Krogan daycare, daycare, daycare simulator. Krogan daycare. <laughs> oh, just man. every day, they're just like exponentially. Your enrollment is just exponentially increasing. Oh no! <laughs> Not again. I guess just they they cue, mature cue the f- really quickly though. But yeah, like cue the full house music and then. Too many Krogans. Too many Krogans. Too many Krogans. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Mass Effect. Mass Effect and Anthem. Bioware. Bioware. Come on, Bioware. We want to love again. You can do it. I I I want Bioware to pull through. I I really love their games and would like them to be to be good. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Indeed. All right. Hot take. Hot take. <laughs> Bioware, old Bioware games, good. Jade, Jade, hot, Jade Empire, good. Hot take. I want games to be good. <laughs> hot, hot take, me too. Uh, public I service know. announcement. I, I guess this is a PSA. Uh, Destiny 2, the original campaign, is about to be removed. You have less than a week to get in there and play it. I think that's like around Thursday that's coming out. That's the Beyond Light expansion, which is going to remove a lot of content. A lot yeah. of it. It'll come back. Some of it will come back at some point, but it sounds like it's going to be rotated. I don't know what they're doing. Nobody really knows. I don't even think Bungie knows what they're doing. But they're they're <laughs> like trying some new stuff and uh, old, co- uh, old content. A lot of the original Destiny 2... Uh, planets and zones and story are getting pulled out and some new stuff is coming back in uh they're probably gonna it's not all gonna come in right away it's probably gonna be rolled out over the next year as the seasons come they're like all right Mm -hmm. new season here's a new planet or something like that new zone 
Uh, so yeah, if you for some reason have not played the Destiny Two campaign and really want to, the Red War, the base campaign. If you really want to do that, now's the time. It it was fun. it was the the base campaign was fine. I mean, I I yeah. played all of it and it was it was pretty good. So I don't know. Better than the first game. I, I just think it's kind of shitty to remove I mean, all I that content. <laughs> I think it's kind of mediocre to be honest. I mean, it's like. It's it's really like a. Oh, sorry, I wasn't I wasn't saying the campaign is shitty. I think it's shitty that they're removing the content. Oh yeah yeah yeah. 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 It uh, yeah it, it's that there's no way there's no like a Destiny two classic server or something. Uh, you yeah. know how like wow wow classic now, um, and just like to hide all that stuff away from like a game preservation standpoint, they they absolutely are like do not want people playing that content at all like they make it really weird and not like super clear how to play it uh and don't service it at least not since not when i last played it which was like five months ago or whatever the beginning of this season uh but that got extended because covid and yeah um yeah someone pat is just popping off in the chat (laughs) Uh, what has Pat got to say about talking about Mass Effect? Yeah, still oh, yeah, talking about Mass Effect. He said he would play it. Yeah, okay. He wants, he wants to replay the the trilogy. He's not like, mm. oh, I, I'm listening to the podcast and let's let's chat about Anthem or about Destiny. Yeah. But so, anyways, well, it, it is shitty that they're getting rid of. Yeah, but. it's it's it maybe it'll come back in some way but i i don't think so those areas will come back i don't know if the red war will come back they'll, they'll, they'll reopen the bungee vault like yeah vault. uh next up uh gears pop <laughs> <God>. <laughs> hey it's, it's the next thing it's, it's i know but you just say it they're just like the concept is funny gears and... pop yeah and then... <laughs> And the reason it's on the news is because uh, they they ruined Marcus Phoenix's fucking Funko Pops. No, uh, <laughs> it's just I just had the thought of Marcus Phoenix going my fucking Funko Pops instead mm. of my fucking tomatoes. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Gears Pop is being shut down. Yep. Uh, why anyone thought Gears? Funko Pop. Is it a gotcha game? It's it's kind of like Clash Royale. Okay. Which is kind of a gotcha game in a way. Kind of. uh, yeah, but why? I, this that was always makes a, sense to me. That was always a why. I mean, yeah, I don't know. Those... <sighs> I, Funko Pops, be, love them or hate them, whatever. I just yeah. don't think, I don't think they would make a great game like it seems like they're kind of trying they're to be trying like oh to make like, it like, 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 Leg- like the lego games right like, yeah like mm-hmm. oh we're gonna do our lego funko we poppy take on these series it's like maybe but i don't like, know if I, I, funko pop like is i think brand. that could that well that could work sure I, I, you have to cross promote but the problem is you have the cross promotional like funko pop is just a bunch of different brands represented so like getting everyone to be on board with that and do that is probably yeah. really difficult but like if you did like a gotcha game with that was just here's a bunch of different Funko Pop stuff if you did a Clash Royale type game there's a bunch of different Funko Pop stuff that would probably do really unreasonably upsettingly well whereas I Funko Pop Gears yeah and I think there is a mobile Gears of War, I don't think that's like the thing that's like that cross that that Venn diagram well, yeah that, that intersection is very small because like to me I don't know maybe I'm wrong but like Funko Pop seems like they're kind of wholesome and sure. Gears uh, as sort a sort of I mean they have a lot of Funko Pops about like that are they, less they wholesome characters but sure but like yeah you yeah that's true like they do come from some mature franchises but like Funko Pops themselves seem like they're cutesy they're that kind of thing like I, I if you're thinking Lego games I, I wouldn't expect a Lego game from a mature franchise like I wouldn't expect well they they won't do it like they I don't do yeah, like a Mortal like, Kombat like you're not going to get a Lego Requiem for a Dream or something <laughs> but um like but like they do the family go, stuff eyes wide shut God. <laughs> uh 
Lego American Psycho, but um, like Funko Pop holds a similar kind of cachet to me where I would expect a game to be something more along those lines. So Gears naturally just feels like a weird fit. That's, yeah, just, that's it, just me though. Yeah, and yeah, I, I mean, no, as somebody 100%. that owns a, a bunch of Funko Pops, I don't necessarily buy them because I like Funko Pops. I <laughs> buy them because hey, there's no other way I can get a figure of this character. So uh, I'm going to buy or that. Or a figure, cheap figure of this character will cost me like $400. Right. right. Yeah. Like this is, or there, I mean, there are certain ones where it's like, this is the only figure I can get of this character like at all. So, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll get that. Or yeah, or it's really expensive. And these are like just cheap, like, hey, I'm at, at Target and there's a Funko Pop of, I don't know, of something. So I might go, okay, it's going to be, it's less than $10. So I can add it to my cart, but it's not like necessarily, I don't, I think that's most people's experience with it too. And so I doubt, I don't really think there are many people that are like super attached to the branding of sure. it. Oh my God. Oh no. So <laughs> this reminded me, cause we're talking about the figures and uh -huh. it reminded me that just recently, a Resident Evil 2 remake Claire Redfield statue was recently announced, I believe. Uh, yeah, and it is, uh, God, the price, $1,349. My God. You can, uh, speaking Shipping of... <laughs> in January to April 2022. God. You can... Wow. Uh, Fun fun fact uh, about the game I was playing: you can buy a f life size figure of Riza from Atelier uh, Atelier Riza, hmm. twenty five thousand dollars. What? Yeah. Okay, that has to be something like that they put in a shop in Japan or something. Yeah, I, I think that they're like they just need. Uh, I think they are doing it up by pre orders and saying like they needed at least ten pre orders to put it into production. But <laughs> at least this... ten. Wow. At least this... ten. Which I think God. that they, they, they have that's like, nuts. you know, they know that, that most people aren't gonna be That's a business. That, that's that a, has bu to be a that's business like an arcade thing, yeah. or like a super potato like that's sure. a game store, not a but it's not a that's or home. if you're like yeah. a hardcore Unless you're a pervert fan. pervert. I mean uh, these honestly Resident that might Evil... be people are like the, one of the things I think is nice about like, this is off topic. One of the things I think is nice about the Atelier series is that a lot of the times it doesn't uh, go into fan service things, which is kind of admirable because all, all the main characters are, are young women, mm -hmm. but uh, Riza is probably the most sexualized of the, of the main characters. And I think in game, it's not terrible, but people, people like Riza. So. Yeah. Um, if you want a good, uh, kind of retrospective on that. I probably should have mentioned it earlier. Sorry. Um, Valkyrie Aurora on YouTube does a really oh, good... Oh, I've, I've watched those videos. Yeah. yeah. She she does a really good job of explaining like the starts of the Atelier series and like, yeah, like specifically how she's a lady playing those. And she's like, yeah, I feel like this is not sexualized. It's not gross. It's not It weird. really does. It really isn't. And I mean, even in like in the game, there's not, there hasn't been anything gross. Like there's the mildest of jiggle physics, but like... In, oh. in a way that feels realistic. You know what I mean? Um, I have to rescind my statement. She has deleted everything on her channel because she was getting uh, abuse. No. That is extremely I was, sad. I didn't know that. I think that. I was looking for her videos. I was like, I was like, where, I was like searching for a, the hmm. Atelier series. And I was like, why, why am I, why are her, aren't her videos coming up? And that's why. That's very that sad. Sucks, but... Yeah. That sucks big, but she's, she's awesome. She is awesome. Yeah, but that's but that is one of the things that I think is 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 nice about the series is that generally it's like not sexualized for having like young female protagonists up for every game. But at the same time, people people like Ryza in people find a way to be creepy about Ryza. So yeah. I was looking at screenshots of the game, and there is definitely a mod scene for that game. Oh no! Oh god! No, no. <laughs> no so what's thank next? You. What's next on news, Andre? Anyways, <laughs> Before we go down that hole. Anyways, I'm not going to buy that large figure for Riza. <laughs> no, you you want to go down a hole? Well, no. I can. Uh... <laughs> No, uh, it's nothing that bad. At least not what I saw. But there's probably I, I didn't go deep on that uh, that thread. Anyway, okay. uh, Fortnite 
It's coming yeah. back to iOS, baby. Yeah. Well, that's just game. in time uh, for Alex to get a new phone. Fortnite you, coming hey, to iOS. Yeah. You too. You do. Oh, you, yeah. You also? No, you, they uh, put the uh, they put that album on everyone's phone. That happened a while ago. If you use <laughs> iTunes. Ha 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 ha. It's like if you make a new iTunes account, do they put that YouTube album on there? Probably a limited time, limited time deal. Anyway, anyways, uh, no, it's but it's not via the App Store. Don't go. Don't go there. You got to sign up for GeForce Now, which apparently <laughs> runs in Safari, and you can yep. play Fortnite on an iPhone or iOS in a browser streaming. Okay. Yeah, it's a roundabout way to get it All back, right. but sure. If you're if That's... you're really if you if you're really attached to both having an iPhone and playing uh, Fortnite on your iPhone, then. Mm-hmm. That, we have that's a, a thing you can do. We have a message from the chat on the Gaming Fix Twitch channel saying, quote, that U2 album plays sometimes automatically when I plug my phone into my car from Pat. What album? The oh, YouTube. the U2 album. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I, I thought you said I, YouTube album and I was really confused. But... <laughs> the YouTube album. Yes. Yeah. I album. have not purchased a new phone yet. Okay. Uh, I am waiting. Uh, waiting for reviews. Yep. waiting for uh, i actually need to check to double check my sim card will work because my That's my fair. company is like uh hey if you want an iphone sim it's gotta you gotta like pick you gotta say you want an iphone sim and not hmm. this other sim like yeah it's a interesting whole, yeah, yeah I don't uh, know well why. well slight tangent uh the reason i ordered an iphone is because reviews are hitting monday so i mm-hmm. will have time to cancel if reviews yeah. turn out are they the hitting bad. monday oh i thought yes. they're hitting like wednesday because that's no. what they did on the other one i think i saw it confirmed that they're hitting monday okay uh, i could be could be wrong I mean, like, but that's what i saw yeah uh i mean the like the other phones have been out so these are just a bigger and a smaller version of the other phones and yep. there's like some slight differences in the camera on the pro max but oh my god yeah that that is a nice figure but that is really expensive the, the rest yeah of the 55 centimeters 58 that's, that's for the leon half a meter <laughs> more more than that's five centimeters more than half a meter you're right anyways uh that is nice news. but hmm. yeah <laughs> I, I i would gladly display that in my in my home but uh i mean i got this like goku figure right here i i've, I've got a couple of nendoroids coming so same. those are i'm so excited for the rena yep, for nendoroid same. Uh, anyway, okay. <laughs> um, next story: Codemasters, creators mm-hmm. of the Dirt series, Project Cars, right? Uh, nope. No, no, that's a different team. Uh, yep. What else, What else does Codemasters do? They, um, I think they also do the F one games, don't they? Oh yeah, that sounds right. The dry, a lot of driving game, yeah. games, the, driving uh, games. That's what they do. They do yeah. grid. Uh, they have been purchased by Take Two. Of yeah. the publisher you might know them as the publisher of uh, or they own gearbox right they own gearbox or no they? gearbox they is own, they own publishing own, what's they, the, own, they, they own have rockstar. some sort of partnership rock yeah they own rockstar uh they do the bad wrestling games <laughs> uh yeah know. they do uh they they put out things like bioshock mm-hmm. yeah uh stuff like that so Hopefully this is like a good thing for Codemasters. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting timing because they just put out Dirt 5, which has been getting some mixed reception on PC. <laughs> yeah, uh, console sounds like the current gen, uh, as of now, current gen versions of... God, the Xbox launches in like two days in Japan, three <laughs> days in America, but it's not... Uh, yep. Whatever. Uh, yeah, on the 10th. So yeah, Codemasters... Uh, yeah, that, that sounds like rough on the current gen, but probably on the next gen, it'll be, it's pretty sweet, I think. So as I think I've heard, I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. Yep. Hopefully it's better than the PC version. The story my friend was telling me is hilarious. Sounds like having to alt tab till it's like yeah. in the right spot. No video settings. No, yeah, yeah, my like... friend was basically saying, yeah, there's no resolution settings, no video settings. So you can't change like, oh, run it on high or medium or low. You can't do that. Can't change resolution. You can't run it in windowed or 
like it only runs mm. in full screen you can't change it to windowed mm -hmm. and sometimes when it runs in windows it windowed it just shows like the top left corner of it only so you have to like alt tab back in and out until it centers itself it's like what <laughs> i don't even know how that works yeah that's that's really bizarre it's uh, hilarious but it's a bummer yeah hopefully they get it figured out i don't know how like if it, it seems like the pc should be like in the mid in like the console switch it should be like uh, okay we can get the pc version it just works yeah and the, but apparently not yeah uh weird. next up sony not one to sit on their laurels mm -hmm. saw that microsoft bought bethesda game works or bethesda zenimac bethesda and it's uh studios for like 7.5 billion dollars or whatever mm -hmm. and sony said you want skyrim you want unlimited skyrim on the xbox well we want unlimited anime yes and bought crunchyroll did is this finalized is this is this yeah. for for it's, real happening it's, okay it's for realsies I think Country Roll used to be owned by AT and T or something like one of the yeah yeah mm -hmm. something like that. Um, so yeah, I guess they just they gobbled it up. They also own yep, Funimation, uh, I think, right? Oh, yeah, wow. which isn't great, like in terms of a uh, you know your all your anime in one place. Yeah, uh, Sony should not have the anime monopoly. Yeah, yeah. although well, they, uh, there's a Funimation app on like the Xbox and stuff, right? Oh, like I, a, I'm not saying, I mean, yeah, like, I mean, I think there was a Funimation, like, demo or, like, a deal, or was it Crunchyroll, with, like, Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. Like, there was a... Yeah. Oh, was yeah, see, that seems, yeah, sure. seems, that seems right, but I can't remember. Did either, of you guys, up, but... did either of you guys see the trailer for the new Crunchyroll original anime X-Arm, which launched yes. yesterday? Yeah, I did it, see looks, that. it looks rough, man. It's, yeah, it doesn't look the best <laughs> so, uh, when i saw this piece of news show up i'm like oh this is what sony bought because mm -hmm. it's uh sony's uh, like i wonder if sony saw that and was like what the fuck did we just put our put our money down on but yeah country country rule is also weird um anime outside of north america is weird andre has talked about this before how licensing mm. agreements especially like yeah. being like being in japan you can't use Crunchyroll or like cheese right. who's in the Philippines can't really use Crunchyroll without a VPN like so yeah. which is very which is wild but and, and it's I mean like, I guess I get it but it's also I wild. could watch it on TV here but it doesn't have subtitles so if I wanted to watch subtitles right. I'm out of luck or, or you just gotta like, learn Japanese yes that also but <laughs> uh yeah what if you're hard of hearing mm -hmm. true that's very, I still very gotta, true. you know learning japanese but you know it's just a whole thing it's it's annoying and uh yeah it's just uh, any any sort of like video digital video drm mm -hmm. is fucking stupid like <laughs> i i own stuff on playstation network that i can't watch because i'm physically in japan even though i own it mm -hmm. like it's stupid like it's just yeah we'll see good good for country roll mm -hmm. yeah uh hopefully they don't Hope. say like we're gonna lay off a bunch of you now because we can just use the funimation staff and combine these two studio uh, to <sighs> combine these two hopefully, services or something. hopefully they not. can also pay uh country roll translators for because uh yeah they do not compensate their translators well enough that's the oh. real anime experience yeah. there's a there's a really really good um i have two thoughts there's a really good youtube video from asian boss i think uh which you can find and it talks about the life of someone who works on anime oh like yeah it, i've it, seen it, i've seen like a couple of videos about people who like make manga and stuff and it's yeah. like it is it is rough yeah you are I'm... working constantly so yeah, it's... the title title of this video is quote underpaid and overworked being an animator in Japan. Yeah, um, totally one hundred percent recommend. Re one hundred percent recommend watching it. It sounds like it's very similar doing a translation job. Uh, yeah. So not unlike that. a I'll, video game yeah. job. I, I will link that. I will link that that video in our uh, description for this episode. It's really good. Uh, and the other one, and sorry for talking about piracy on our podcast, but 
horrible subs shut down a month ago, which is crazy because they were actually a really good group. Mm. I still, I still, I, I know I mentioned this on my podcast, but I, I'll mention it again. Uh, it still boggles the mind that Crunchyroll is super legit now yeah. because when because I was they, a teenager, that hard. was like my piracy website of choice. Yes, 100%. <laughs> And so now, now every time people talk about country roll, I'm like, wow, dang, okay, they've they've gone legit. But mm -hmm. uh, all right, next source code for Watch Dogs Legion. <laughs> I feel like I've mentioned this before. Maybe it didn't come up on the podcast. The source code for Watch Dogs Legion was held ransom by some hackers. Then it was leaked, which is the most Watch Dog Watch Dogs thing possible. Source code is like 560 gigs. That's a lot. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. And yeah, um, I'm curious how much of that is actually like assets, like audio and uh, mm -hmm. like models and textures and stuff like that, yeah. versus how much mm -hmm. of it is actually code. Because yeah. like, I'm I'm intrigued. I I almost kind of want to download the source code to take a look mm -hmm. at like how all those systems are working, like the swapping characters, mm -hmm. and if there's like some procedurally generated stuff. Like that sounds kind of interesting, but eh. Uh, I. I wonder if this will mean like people can mod it now and like what kind mm -hmm. of mods people can do. That'll be there, uh, interesting to see. There's no kind of multiplayer in it, right? There will be. Oh, there will be. Oof. Then yeah. Having that source code out there is kind of rough. <laughs> Cause if it's, if it's purely uh, yeah. single player, then whatever, who are you harming? But mm -hmm. yeah, with multiplayer, that means they're probably going to have to change some pretty significant parts. That sucks. Bummer. Uh, apparently, Capcom has also been hit by ransomware, and hackers are holding about a terabyte of data hostage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Japanese Jeez. companies need to get their infosec tight. They need yeah. to they need to tighten things up. Yeah, that's hard <laughs> because sometimes it can be just a really innocent way that happens, um, like someone accidentally linking to like a database uh like or like alluding to where a database is hosted oh we host our database on aws that's sometimes enough information for a hacker to be like oh i'm gonna hit all of these potential endpoints with my scripts and see if i can't find a password and once once they get in they're in like mm -hmm. i'm uh, in like, i'm in like they just need a little innocuous piece of information to just start launching attacks and then the second they're they get there yeah, they can do these uh, ransomware kind of things, and it sucks. So, uh, our, our, I'm, I I want to get us through these next few stories because ho butts. Um, ho the new AMD sorry five thousand <laughs> series fucking <laughs> sorry. rips. Ba back yeah. back back up for a second. Ho butts. Ho butts. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, ho butts. Uh, in a good way, okay. kind of. <laughs> Uh, the new AMD 5000 series uh, are <laughs> just kick ass. Yeah, have you seen the benches for that thing? The the, the benchmarks are make me sad. I bought a CPU when I did. Uh, not that the, the 3600 I have is uh, bad, but holy sh the 5600 uh, X, which is their kind of lowest, uh, the entry level one, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, beats out Intel's highest. 10900K, which has like been the gaming performance king uh, yeah. CPU for quite some time now, and Intel has always held like the gaming performance crown mm -hmm. uh, in their tier. But now they're just like, oh yeah, our super our cheapest processor is better than the most expensive Intel like consumer yeah. processor. Like yeah, like you can get up to the, the 10980XE, but that's usually used for like overclockers and production and stuff. But like yeah, yeah the fact that this thing that costs less than half the price in an area like amd has never won on gaming or not for like the past 10 years at least has never been yeah. ahead but now they just decimated everything except for one game which is red dead redemption uh -huh. 2 <laughs> yeah so the like everything like if you want the best gaming experience get an amd cpu unless you play red dead redemption 2 <laughs> that's <laughs> the literally the one game where where the difference was it there is yeah. any kind of difference. Uh, and if you pair that with these new i'm ex i'm very interested to hear what these do with those new um amd cards the radeon yeah. cards yeah because 
because the shared the, memory. like if yeah the shared memory and yeah. like what is that going to mean for uh gaming performance yeah and it's, it's going to just make me very sad about my computer <laughs> it's honestly it is like i don't mean this as an exaggeration it is some of the most interesting stuff that's happened to pc gaming in probably over 10 years like and, uh, and the, that's the, because it's a big shakeup. Like, yeah, it's AMD fucking bringing it on two fronts, and they are a, they were like underdogs, but they are mm-hmm. single handedly bringing back competition to both this like the CPU, the processor side, and the graphics card side, which is this nuts. is like uh, like in Dragon Ball and the Frieza saga when Goku fights the Ginyu Force, and then he's like he wins, and he's he's on top, but then he gets his ass kicked and he needs to like recover for like a long ass time while everyone else gets just decimated by Frieza. And then Goku comes back and he's just like, Oh yeah. Uh, and Intel is Frieza and AMD is Goku and, uh, Frieza Intel just needs to transform into the next form. And, uh, I like how you're taking it to its logical extreme here. I was just going to yeah. let you continue till it till yeah. you fell all the way down yeah. the Dragon Ball hole. Yeah, Intel is going to cut itself in half and then come <laughs> back to planet Earth. And then uh, it's going to be a robot, part cyborg slash alien uh, emperor. And then Intel, oh or God. not Intel. Uh, yeah, no, NVIDIA. <laughs> it's, it's, it, yeah, they're all going to cut each other up with their graphics cards. And, uh-huh. mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I got to say... Intel, I don't know what they do right now. They're in a really precarious spot where they're, their their next CPUs are coming out in 2021, and it's looking like they're still they're, potentially going to be behind the current Ryzen's that just came yeah. out. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's like maybe oh, maybe on par, maybe on par, maybe. Which it's like eh, I don't know if it's worth that value proposition. And uh, Apple is no longer using Intel chips for their upcoming stuff. Mm-hmm. There's an Apple event on the 10th, and so that means they're going to lose that whole part of their market because so, now Apple's making their own silicon. It's like, what's going to happen to Intel? Like, <laughs> uh, It's interesting that they went from the kings to potentially down in the dumpsters pretty within the next two or three years. Yeah, uh, it's... Who knows? Uh, hopefully... <laughs> Hopefully they are able to pull back just because getting more competition in this space is good. And if they're all like pushing each other, that'll be PC gaming will be like really exciting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but I wonder what those Intel GPUs are going to be like. Oh, they're not going to be good, but they're going to be pretty low end or like mid to low end. But Probably. Um, so, and I will say, uh, I was lucky and fortunate enough to happen to bumble my way into a 3080 Founders mm-hmm. Edition because uh, I was keeping an eye on like some stock-based discords and stuff like that where they get, send mm-hmm. notifications out for as soon as stock hits. And I was like, oh, I happen to be online and looking at my screen when this happened. Let's try it. Got one. Woo. Mm-hmm. Uh, boy, <laughs> the Ryzen, the Zen 3s. Mm-hmm same thing uh, they were mm-hmm. they were they were all like amd was like yeah we got plenty of stock people are going to get these no problem exact same issue as the mm-hmm. 3000 series launch like literally the exact same issue bots bots just gobbled them up and then uh no one like very few people have mm-hmm. actually been able to get a hand on them in like this i found this buck wild is you could keep an eye on stock that came up in mm-hmm. uh canada through our retailers mm-hmm. 3600 or 5600 reasonable stock 5800 reasonable stock 5900 and 5950 x across the entire country some retailers had three (laughs) like for the entire country and it's like what that's insane like three (laughs) maybe even like zero in some some retailers cases it's just nuts so Mm -hmm. i feel like we're gonna see like we kind of started seeing this with pre-orders for the xbox and the ps5 where it's like getting in on those is hard and Mm -hmm. i wonder what it's going to be like next year too with like any kind of technology launch it seems like it's going crazy so Mm -hmm. yeah it's uh i wonder if like the pandemic ending will slow stuff down or like make that stuff kind of okay but Mm. like i have no 
delusions about getting a PS5 this year, even though I really want one. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm at that point too. Yeah, but it's just technology. <laughs> Do you think, uh, so since you're kind of like in this between spot where like you're trying to buy a CPU, you've got, you've got like a computer unbuilt, you've yep. got like your 3080 sitting there, yep. or are you like, maybe you'll try and buy like a 68 or 6,900? I'm willing XT. to consider it once the, once the, once come the, the, the only mm -hmm. thing that I have a hang up is that I have a G, uh, G sync monitor. So I'd be giving mm. up that functionality. Well, uh have they not like i get does does g sync i know they change some stuff does it not work with free sync like so or does it have to be free sync? like oh, g sync God. can work on free sync but free so, sync can't work on g sync so is that there, what it is? i'm not gonna get into all of this because we'll be here for an hour and i know allison does not give a single fuck about any of this um <laughs> but like you're not wrong there for for g sync and FreeSync, there's now like five different tiers of compatibility. Yeah, yeah. Where it's like, oh, there's G Sync compatible, and then there's like G Sync, G Sync, and then there's like G Sync yeah. Premium, and like, and then like same for FreeSync. Like, yeah, mine's old. Mine's from 2014. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. It's it's before they had that kind of interoperability, so it's mm -hmm. a G Sync. Okay. Uh, okay. I've got one that does like free sync and G Sync. Yeah. If I had one of those, I would be like, yeah, maybe let's let's check out one of these AMD cards. Uh, but the thing that still matters for those is the drivers because mm -hmm. AMD's drivers are historically uh, it's coin toss as to whether they even work. Mm -hmm. So anyways, let's get off yeah. of this because otherwise Allison is going to just spontaneously combust and I don't want to. Well, we get to a good <laughs> thing for Allison. We can talk about a story that relates to a game that I know she likes. Actually, all of us like yeah. quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, Celeste. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, uh the creator uh what 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 are they going by now celeste i or maddie no Mother, no sorry. i mean maddie okay oh they're going by maddie too now yeah okay. so maddie uh a creator of celeste is uh wrote a blog post about how madeline the protagonist from celeste is canonically and definitively trans yeah uh which was some people had like theorized about because there was like a trans flag on in like a uh, image of her their room. Yeah, her is that? Yep. Do they use yeah, it, in the game? Okay, her. Okay. I don't know. Uh, yeah, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and and then also, it, it's a very very personal kind of story too. Um, and yeah, with uh the. Uh, creator of the game, uh, Maddie, transitioning. It's it, like there, there are definitely some theories and some, you know, people thinking about that. But um, they wrote an article basically detailing making the game and not knowing that they were trans while they made the game, or knowing that when they started, um, yeah. Madeline was trans when making the game. But at the same time, like you know, because it dealt with a lot of those kinds of gender feelings and gender um that that it's kind of inexorably linked but yeah, it, yeah it's, it, it was a, it was a really good post it's an extremely good read um mm -hmm. i will also link that in the show notes it's i think it's completely worth um going through one thing i really loved is uh <laughs> her directly calling out we didn't want to pull a jk rowling <laughs> right <laughs> which which They're seemed like... like it seemed like it, it seemed like part we didn't want to go back and retrospect, like retroactively change the narrative on it, but it also seemed like a kind of tacit, like "fuck you, J.K. Rowling." Right, <laughs> where it's like we understand we don't want to be like, "Hey, let's get credit for this," but at the same time, since like it, it's really, you, you know, a, a yeah, lot of the story is really, really personal, and yeah. making Celeste really was a big part of. Um, like dealing with that uh for them so it's just yeah it was it was it was a good read and it was it was an interesting thing so yeah like one of the things i really liked about it is they talked about like oh but are you going to explicitly call it out or like is it explicitly called out in the farewell dlc which now i feel like i need to play and like like fans were talking about that like speculating and all this stuff and then she basically talked about like you know like as a person who was and somewhat still is a closeted trans person 
Like she didn't feel comfortable talking about that. Like when people were poking her about it and they were just like, they kind of treated the character with the same respect. Uh, it's yeah, it's worth mm-hmm. reading. It's right. And it's, and I think playing it, I mean, I know that I personally really connected with Celeste, um, from a mental health perspective, mm. but I think that a lot of people have really connected with it from a uh, trans perspective as well. So I think that this is really, it was yeah. a really good read and I think it was a really good discussion of of what the game means to a lot of people. Yeah, and I think also one of the great things about Celeste is it works even like outside of that narrative like yeah it's relatable because like it's not explicitly a story about that but it's so easily like translate to that but you can those right. sorts of feelings you can easily put on to like your own personal life whether right. you know, you're mean, cis or gay or trans or whatever it is like as a cis person i really viewed a lot of it as um uh dealing with depression to be honest uh, and that's what it, that was. It, it was totally. um, to get really personal. Uh, I started playing that right about round when I was getting more and more treatment for depression um, and started taking my antidepressants and seeing my therapist more often. Um, and it really I th- it, it, like I really viewed it as being, you know, kind of a, a, a really important game for that time for me. Um, but uh, like. Like the blog post says, it doesn't mean less that this, uh, for a lot of people, that it was uh, transness. And it's like also, yeah. you know, again, uh, <clears throat> one of the one of the first things that they uh, that um, Maddie says in this article is, uh, was Madeline's transness left intentionally vague in order to make her story more relatable to cis people? And immediately, that wasn't our intention. Um, yeah. And thinking about it, though, why couldn't a cis person relate to a trans person? Yeah, and, no, that was that was super relevant. And yeah, modern trans struggle might be an, uh, unique in its details, but it is definitely not alien to the human condition. Yeah. So agreed. Yeah, but, and I and yeah. W- one thing that to kind of I was also opening the article and taking a look. Um, uh, about halfway through. She mm-hmm. talks about how, quote, trans people shouldn't be forced to publicly identify as trans in a world that is often hostile to them, and they shouldn't right. be reduced mm-hmm. to their transness. They should be allowed to live their lives how they want, and everyone should be feel, uh, feel be free to explore their gender identity without feeling pressure to face, the, or sorry, to place themselves into right. simplistic categories for the benefit of others. And that's right, yeah, right, and, like, and and also it's a lot. A lot of it is to like, it's like, like they said, like it's it's messy. Um, it's not necessarily super straightforward. I think that, um, you know, it's, it's not just like, are you trans or are you not? I mean, that's true for a lot of people, but there's a lot of people that might shift towards different gender presentations over time or think or identify as non-binary and then realize, no, I'm, uh, a trans man or something like that. Like there's, there's, it's, it's yeah. not just, you, you don't just necessarily always wake up one day and go, Oh, I'm a trans person. Like, yeah. you know, it's, it, and, and, and so like, I think that seems what, from what a lot of this development cycle, uh, I think that's really re- reflected because like Maddie didn't necessarily know that they were trans until, mm. you know, until the development was over and was like started but it kind of like gave them a hunch and they were working on it and it, i think it's just I, I think that's part of it too is that it's like it's not necessarily oh they're hiding something it's maybe they don't know or maybe they aren't really fully aware of it themselves yeah. so yeah. yeah it's it's a great article totally it is really reading. really great um, and i think that it's really important and I'm I'm so glad we, that you know to recontextualize or re reexamine Celeste because I still really really love that game. Yeah, it's great. Um, if you have not played Celeste, it is on Xbox Game Pass, Ooh. or you can probably get it for cheap uh, on like Steam or PlayStation or Switch. Switch, yeah. Uh, so yeah, you should check out Celeste because it's it's a good. It is platform. a great game, and I think that it's really 
um, we, I think we've talked about this a lot, but it, it, it's, it's like the one kind of massacre platformer that I've actually completed because mm -hmm. I think that, I think they do a good job with accessibility controls, but also in making it an accessible experience, even if it's difficult. Yeah. So. All right. Our last or second to last news story, <laughs> uh, Miles Morales, uh, in the new Spider-Man game, which people say is good. Yeah. No sign yeah. language and uses it in the game, which is neat. Uh, that's, that just came up, I guess, because Allison is taking sign language class. Yeah. Uh, Andre sent it to me yesterday. Um, and I just wanted to bring that up because I thought that was really, really neat. Uh, I've been taking sign language class for the past several weeks. Um, and it's something I, I'm hopefully going to keep pursuing because I really like it. Uh, but uh, I think it's I think it's neat to have that kind of representation of, mm -hmm. of sign language, and then also speaking to presumably uh, somebody who's deaf or hard of hearing in the game. So, yeah. not since the Quiet Man have we had <laughs> such representation. <laughs> God. Wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Forgot and, and, all and about the, that. <laughs> the signing looked pretty accurate from what I could tell, but I'm also like extremely slow with my signing still so i yeah. it's like That's i'm like wait hold on stop no <laughs> do, do once again, once again please like real slow Can you slow slower and louder slow. somehow again, slowly <laughs> with, yeah with, your, with a, your mouth open and happier yeah i but, can be like please sign again slowly and this is like, great for the podcast <laughs> yeah <laughs> Allison was signing during this. Uh, I was, yeah, I, I, but no, it's... I think that's great. And I always, I think more representation, especially if people, um, you know, with like different, like like people who are disabled or people who are um, yeah. blind or people who are deaf, I think that's really something that I think is missing in a lot of games. And I, I hope that we get a little bit more. Yeah, there, I'm, I'm almost intrigued to play the Miles Morales game because it seems like there's been a lot of just interesting news like little tidbit tidbits that have come out of it like there is this stuff like the, the 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 signing asl kind of stuff which is like oh they're thinking about ableism in a real world context which is kind of people don't do that and it, they should and then mm -hmm. like there is a very explicit and really well done black lives matter mural that's point painted on a wall mm -hmm. that you can find and like yep. it, for a big company like insomniac and also sony backing this like to have that stuff in there is really nice like the fact that they're paying attention to it so I'm, mm -hmm. I'm intrigued to try it, even though if I don't really care about the Spider-Man stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. All right. Well, our last important news story. We've uh -huh. been sitting on this for, for minutes. That's what the butt uh, was like, about? No, not about sitting on it, but like I just I've got to get through the rest of this so I can say, finally, definitively, Donald Trump, eat my Ass. <laughs> oh, you godless motherfucker <laughs> joe biden has won the the election uh as projected by the associated press and multiple outlets reporting with pennsylvania winning that puts him at 273 electoral votes which is what he needs to win and become oh, the next president oh <sighs> Thank God. He, Joe Biden, you can get in line and eat my ass next, but <laughs> first, this is yeah, I, yeah. I, I think one of the things I was mentioning a while ago on Twitter was like, this is absolutely a first step, and work isn't done. But I think that we can also take a moment to celebrate that yes. we're kicking Trump to the curb. And uh, thankfully, um, to quote uh, a tweet from. Uh, Shane from BuzzFeed, who I who I follow on Twitter. Okay. One reason this kicks ass is that Donald Trump fucking sucks, and I think <laughs> I think we can all stand by that. I, I I just watching him suffer. Like I'm glad he didn't die from COVID just so we could suffer oh. through this. Yeah, fair enough. Um, Chris Edgerton sends a message from the chat saying Betsy DeVoe gone to fuck her. Yes. Oh fuck that, her. The... Yeah. Oh, I don't know so much. Oh. That whole cabinet, that whole, that whole, that whole administration, just into the sun. Yeah. So that is finally some a breath of relief that a lot of people yeah. can breathe. Yeah. Uh, everybody, uh, thanks Stacey Abrams who did a lot of yes wonderful work. I want to just yeah. like. Send across her... the country, not just in Georgia, but in uh, yeah, across the country, Georgia specifically, but also um, 
for a lot of get out the vote efforts, especially she, in places she like helped Wisconsin. a lot of yeah, she helped yeah. a lot of states uh, do their voter registration and get that going well. Yeah, so I, I yeah. think that you know recognize the efforts of a lot of people like that too, who put a ton of work into getting this result and yeah, um, and making yeah. some good work. And I just want to like, can I just like. Venmo Stacey Abrams some cash for like yeah. funny money to just like, do whatever she wants. <laughs> Treat yourself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, it's great news. Dogs can be in the White House again because um, Joe Biden has mm -hmm. dogs. Uh, I guess now we keep an eye on Senate, but no matter no matter the case, this is big news. Right. The, yeah. The, 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 yeah. Work's not the, done, is... but it's today is a good day to celebrate. Uh, at, as a orc in warcraft 3 might say job's done but no it isn't because i'm <laughs> no, gonna put not. you right back to work <laughs> god <laughs> you, you not done thanks for keeping it relevant to our podcast topic Andre. Yep. <laughs> yep. job's done uh and with that uh we can finish this episode of the gaming fix podcast on episode 146 November 7th, 2020. I've been your host, Andre Cole, a.k.a. your partner's favorite popsicle. You can find the podcast on your podcast platform of choice, but you probably know that you're listening to us already. Maybe you're streaming. Maybe you're on YouTube. I don't know what you're doing. Uh, your podcast platform of choice. Find us. Subscribe. Leave us a review on your... if your platform of choice offers such a thing if not head over to podchaser.com slash gaming fix leave us a review there we'd really appreciate it you can find us on twitter at uh twitter.com slash fix podcasts or uh, on facebook no not don't go to facebook don't don't go to twitch that's the one i was trying to say <laughs> uh twitch.com slash fix podcasts uh is there probably something else i'm forgetting i don't even know uh you can find me andre on twitter at coolslaw c-o-o-l-s-l-4-w allison where can people find you find me on twitter at w-r-i-t-e-r-s-e-r-e-n-y-t-y and alex what do you guys think of drumsticks like the 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 ice cream drumsticks those are very good those might be okay. one of my favorites sure yeah, yeah I, like I, it's I not a popsicle. Down. It's not a popsicle, but like I like them. Honestly, like, I like I like an, a drumstick more than a popsicle. Yeah, me too. Like they they're pretty good ice cream. You got the crunchy waffle cone, and then at the bottom you got the little little tuba of milk chocolate. Little chocolate. Yeah, yeah, a little treat at the end. Also, to and... quote to quote Seth Rogen on Twitter, they just did this shit on Saturday so we could get fucked up. So. <laughs> the only my only regret is they did it before <laughs> Saturday Night Live. Oh, uh, that's so true. Yeah. They, should have, they should have done it tomorrow just so like Saturday Night Live can't ruin but it. Whatever. I mean, they're going to have to come up with something real quick. <laughs> uh, they're going to be like, oh shit, what are we doing? Donald can't... Trump singing Hallelujah. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I have one more quote from Twitter okay. from one Ashley O. Um, yeah. Quote Brooklyn is on fire right now, and I'm having a celebratory glass of wine before noon in honor of the Great Orange Purge of 2020. <laughs> Oompa loompa doompa dee <laughs> fuck you. Yeah. Uh, stay wet, gamers. I know I will be as Donald Trump eats my ass. All right. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs>